the Tennessee starting quarterback would not. You see him on the field. He's still got that boot on his left ankle, and you can see the dejection on Casey Clawson's face. He tried to get himself ready, but instead it'll be the freshman James Banks who will get the call for Tennessee this afternoon. Tennessee normally a team right in the hunt for the East Championship. But because of those injuries, the Vols not in that position this year. Georgia can wrap things up if they can come up with a win over Auburn today. But if that does not happen, things get all too complicated to tell you about in more than just a few seconds. And in the West, well, it's anybody's guess what might happen. Mississippi State still looking for its first win in the conference. Of course, Alabama at the bottom of the standings simply because they're not eligible for the championship because of that probation. Uh, but LSU leading the way and the Tigers looking to win their second straight Western Division championship. Again, you got to have those six victories against Division I opponents to get bowl eligible. They're the folks that have already qualified, and there you see those that could qualify. Again, Alabama and Kentucky already there, but because of their NCAA sanctions, they are not eligible. So South Carolina, Tennessee, and Ole Miss still trying to get into position to be bowl eligible, and Tennessee trying to get into position to extend their streak of New Year's Day bowl appearances to nine in a row. In order to do that, Coach Philip Fulmer has said that they're going to need to win out, hope for something to happen, and then get that ninth victory in that postseason bowl game. So that's what the Vols are playing for. The Bulldogs of Mississippi State, even though they're still looking for that first Southeastern Conference victory, they believe that if they can win out, they can play their way into the postseason as well. But one thing that neither team has been able to do in this SEC portion of the schedule is to generate any offense counting the regulation period against Arkansas Tennessee has now gone five straight games without scoring 20 or more points and there it'll be a tough task today to score 20 or more points if Mario Hagan and Joe Lee Dunn's defense can get on track here in Starkville after a little bit of a sputtering start, we've gotten untracked as well, and our guys are warm upstairs. Dave Neal and Dave Rowe are set to bring you all the play-by-play. -play. The fans here in Starkville are juiced as Tennessee is here for the first time since the early 90s. We hope you stick around. We'll be back with a kickoff from Starkville right after this. Here, but we're denied after losing to LSU in the SEC championship game. But this season has not gone as planned. With injuries to key players, Tennessee has fumbled away a chance to return to the SEC title game and are fighting just to be eligible for a ball. Today, the balls come into Starkville to take on Mississippi State. The Bulldogs hope that a bowl game is in their future as the season winds down. It's the balls and the dogs coming up next. I love all y'all back in the face. I love it, baby. Touchdown! Can you believe it? Touchdown, Tennessee! We are in Starkville, Mississippi, where it is cool, but it is gorgeous for our Jefferson Pilot SEC Game of the Week, featuring two teams that desperately need a win. Tennessee at 5-4 and four, and Mississippi State at 3-6, and six, coming your way right here on JP Sports. And hello again, everybody. I'm Dave Neal. This is my partner, Dave Rowe. And Dave... This is an interesting situation developing for yeah. Tennessee. Casey Clawson, their starting quarterback, injured his ankle a couple of weeks ago, re-injured it against Miami, and now it appears he will not play today for the Tennessee Volunteers, meaning they'll go to a true freshman in James Banks. Well, the loss of Casey Clawson is huge. I mean, the statistical loss is, is yardage, but more importantly, you, use, you lose consistency and you lose leadership. You see the results the last three games. And then we go to James Banks. He's just a freshman. He's a great scrambler. But today, what Tennessee needs to do is they need to step up on offense and help him out. James Banks will face an active Mississippi State defense today. That is for sure. But speaking of the Bulldogs, it's not necessarily their defense as much as it's been their offense. They are 11th in the Southeastern Conference in rushing yards per game. Today, they'll try to get it done and move the football on the ground via a true freshman and a senior. Yeah, and Jurius Norwood, he's just a freshman. He's got an incredible average, Dave. He's the future. They know they have a gem, but the future of the SEC is right now. And then they get Justin Griffin back. He is an outstanding back. He's very versatile. He's got good hands out of the backfield. 
Jackie Sherrill had a tough uh, couple of years here in Starkville but feels that he's got some young players that have made some significant strides the past few weeks and that'll help his club down the stretch. Mississippi State won the toss they deferred so Tennessee will receive and the opening kickoff sails through the end zone. Third member of our team as always down on the sidelines Dave Buzz Baker and Buzz you got more on today's game. Absolutely Dave I had a chance to talk with uh, Randy Sanders the Tennessee offensive coordinator just before the game I said how much do you change the package with James Banks in there. He said you've got to be a lot more receiver specific. You don't want to give Banks a lot of checks and he says that creates much more of a challenge for an offensive coordinator because of the fact that Joe Lee Dunn is so unpredictable. So it's a real cat and mouse game that will go on between these two coordinators and it's an awful breezy day down here Dave the wind as you look at it going straight from your left to right. We'll see how much of a factor that plays this afternoon in the kicking game the banks first handoff fumble. Tennessee picks it up Cedric Houston but once again Tennessee puts it on the ground they have fumbled the ball 21 times total this season they have ended up losing. A le uh, seven of those. Yeah, and you can always think of that when you think of a new quarterback. It's different rhythm. It's a different snap count. And there, of course, you see the 12 offensive fumbles. That's incredible to lose that many because that's just not a trait of a Tennessee football team. Second down and 11. There's Houston. Take a look at our Chevy starting lineups today for the Tennessee Volunteers. Jason Witten, here's a guy that has led the team in receptions from his tight end spot. He also leads the team with four touchdown catches. The offensive line, a little banged up, but Michael Munoz back in there, number 77. Coaches say Will Offenhusel has been solid every single game at 305 pounds, a senior captain. Tennessee will take a timeout as they are looking at third down and 10. And we will step aside with the volunteers and the Bulldogs return to Starkville third down coming up for the Vols. Back in Starkville as Tennessee with freshman quarterback James Banks looking at a third down and 10 Tennessee had to call a timeout because they had 12 men on the field. Banks rolls great foot speed trying to find some room and does so. Needs to get to the 30 for the first down and won't get there and then gets driven to the ground in front of the Mississippi State bench. Here's our Mississippi State defense today after the nine yard gain by Banks. Jason Clark, 44 tackles, a couple of sacks this season. The defensive line has struggled a little bit. Mario Hagan has had another sensational campaign as a linebacker. Michael Goler, the former basketball player, hasn't played since 96, but Last week hasn't played football since 1996 but last week led the team with 13 total tackles. Back to punt is Dustin Colquitt who punted 10 times last week against Miami punting into the win and it's a very high kick. Corey Banks will drop ball is loose and the Bulldogs ball on it at the 30. Brett Morgan. Happens to be at the right spot at the right time. 38 yard punt. You can see they were very lucky to get that ball back. Let's check in with Buzz. You know, Dave, it's interesting. Right before the game, Jackie Sherrill said you got to watch Colquitt's punt. It's kind of like a slice off of a golf club. It's going to go from your left to right. And that time it almost cost the Bulldogs because they didn't adjust. And the wind probably didn't help very much either, Buzz. As Banks put it on the ground. Fant rolls and overthrows his tight end, Donald Lee. And as Mississippi State takes the field, let's take a peek at the Chevy starting lineup for the MSU Bulldogs. Terrell Grendel has three career 100 yard games, but they'll need some big games out of the guys in the backfield today. Among those, Fred Reed and Justin Griffith, who's returning to the field after an injury that kept him out last week. An offensive line a little banked up, still trying to gel as a unit. Kevin Fan completed nearly 53% of his passes. Not the kind of campaign he had hoped for this year, but has been knocked around a little bit, a little banked up. Hasn't played all the snaps as a flag hits the turf. He has shared some time with Kyle York. 
And a redshirt freshman who we will probably see today before we get too far along in this ball game. Prior to the snap, false start on the offensive line. Five yard penalty remains second down. Our defensive lineup brought to you by Chevy for the Tennessee Vols, Demetri Field. And Amari Hand and Rashad Moore on the left side of that line, the only two guys up front that have started every game. The linebacking core, Eddie Moore, Keenan, Keon Whiteside, a couple of really good ones. In the secondary, Rashad Baker has been all everything for Tennessee. Can cover from sideline to sideline. The Mississippi State coaches said they feared him out of that ball secondary. Fant to fire pass is high. An interesting fan high on both his first passes. That sometimes comes, you know, you're a little bit cool out here. The difference in temperature, and you just don't get warmed up, but delivering that ball, letting it just float out of his hands. He told us yesterday, did Kevin Fant, that that's a, the one area about his mechanics that he's been trying to work on is the ball is sailing on him more than he would like. Yeah, and I asked him about that, and he said it's from not planting and rolling over on that plant foot. Shotgun formation on third and 15. Loose football, but Fant has it. Fant will run. He needs to get to the 40 for the first down. He does so. That's going to be very close after the gain of 15. The mark was like the 40 and a half yard line. And I think he got it. Well, you talk about disaster. Fant makes a tremendous play out of that. The ball rolled back on the snap from center. He didn't panic. He picked it up, stepped up in the pocket, and found that first down. And you know, you always need that help from those wide receivers. Look at Jenkins on this block. Drive him out, just stay with him. That allowed Fant to get up past the 40 yard line. They moved the chain, so a big scramble for Kevin Fant. Now they're in a spread formation with four wide receivers and a flag down. T. Billings, the true freshman, was on his way around the right side. Mississippi State this year, seventh in the league in penalties, averaging about 60 yards per game. Here's our referee, Thomas Ritter. To give us the call momentarily. Prior to the snap, false start, movement in the offensive line, five yard penalty, remains first down. Boy, and you can't have that if you're Jackie Sherrill, you hate that. It's a it's five yards, it changes the entire offensive philosophy. Now you're first and 15. Fancy. Little gimpy out there. You know, he has had a bad ankle the last few weeks. Steps in there, fires right through the hands of his intended target, Terrell Grindel, the senior. You know, Justin Griffith, number 31, he adds a lot. He's a good blocker. Look at him lock up with the backer. Don't let him. That's a perfect block. And boy, I think Fant really wanted that one. Let it float again on him a little bit. That's the one your wide receiver. That makes great wide receivers when you come down with that type of a catch. Mississippi State earlier this year having some major issues with the receivers in terms of holding on to the football. Fant rolls out, hits Griffith with it. Griffith, a great pass catcher, 15 catches on the season, now 16 for the senior. Gain of six on the play. Well, that is so valuable, Dave, to allow, to have a fullback that can slide out of the backfield and catch that ball. He's got great hands. When the Jefferson Pilot Sports Crew is on the road covering SEC football, you know where we like to eat at Huddle House and always enjoy their big house breakfast and lunch platters. Six defensive backs in the game on third down and 10 for the Bulldogs. First down just across the 50. Van has plenty of time, goes over the top, nearly picked off. T. Millen's intended target had his hands on it. Mark Jones back there among three white jerseys. Well, good pocket protection. A lot of time to sit back there. The ball comes down well. 
Mark Jones gets a little bit of pressure, but again, you gotta you gotta complete those balls. This is a good pattern. Look at the corner come over and help. Safety comes in there, and Tennessee plays it very well. Go for the football, don't go for the man. Mark Jones back to return this Mississippi State punt. At the five yard line on a 51 yard punt from Jared Cook. And Richard Ball makes the tackle for Mississippi State. So Tennessee backed up on their own territory. Back after a word from your local stations. Why Chevy truck? The most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Back at Scott Field in Starkville, Mississippi. We're scoreless as Tennessee comes out for their second offensive possession. Backed up deep in their own territory with a couple of tight ends in the I formation. Tailback is Cedric Houston. He gets a couple on the play. Mario Hagan makes his 104th tackle of the season. Randy Sanders, the offensive coordinator, going against Joe Lee Dunn. It's rare that we actually have two coordinators down on the field at the same time facing each other. Usually one's up calling the plays from the press box, but these two guys like being down on the sidelines. Well, you talk to them and they say, I get so much more because I look right in the face of the players. And that's with the tight end in motion. Handoff goes to Houston. Cedric Houston out over the 15. That'll be close to a first down. Michael Gollert makes the stop. Boy, when Cedric came back uh, into this lineup, he had been out with a couple of injuries, really had a bad thigh, had a broken thumb. But the last couple of weeks, he has been really solid for this team with two 100-yard games and even carried it 30 times against South Carolina. Well, if you're Mississippi State, Dave, on the other side of the ball, you got to make a stop in here. Get good field position. Got to put pressure on James Banks. Tennessee will have the first down out near the 25 yard line. Jackson makes the stop for Mississippi State after the eight yard game. They want to come up in that second down. You don't want to come up second down and four. You want to come up second down and probably in the six to seven range. If you're Randy Sanders, you love second down and three or four. Out over the 30 yard line goes to Houston. Well, you got to control the line of scrimmage, and that's exactly what Tennessee does. Good cut in there. Find those big guys. Look at that blowing off the line. Will Offenkusel, man, I went down and talked with him. He's a big, huge prospect, 6'8", 305 pounds, and, boy, that time he got a great drive block. I know he made Michael Munoz at 6'6", 300 look small. No. Tennessee's plan. Obviously today pound it without Casey Clawson and they have started this drive at their five and they have done nothing but run it right between the tackles. Yes, that's exactly what they're doing. Pounded it. And you can see Joe Lee done there. He's calling for defensive stunts. What he wants is penetration. Somebody get in that backfield. Disrupt that run. And once again, Dave, a good first down sets up a second and relatively short at four. A lot of options. Serious hitting going on, but another run, the ninth running play for Tennessee will move the chains again. And if I'm Tennessee, I'll just stay with this. Good run, good block up front, offensive line controlling the line of scrimmage. When you run through a hole like that at that speed, they're just driving them off the line of scrimmage. Look at this. Mario Hagen being controlled on the outside. He comes back in, gets on the tackle, but five yards downfield. Good blocking by Victor McClure. 
Tennessee runs it again off the left side. It's Jabari Davis this time, the sophomore out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. Tennessee has gone with two tight ends with McClure and Witten this entire drive and basically has lined up and said, Mississippi State, stop us. Yeah, that's exactly what they've said. You want to take pressure off your young quarterback? Yeah, what you do is just run the football. Philip Fulmer knows that. Coming in here, I know he has concern about James Banks. His passing. This, he doesn't have any pressure now. Well, he told us that his team just needed to be tough today. That was the biggest concern for him. They just needed to be physical and tough with this Bulldog team, and so far, they've done that. Here's a little play action. Banks will roll out. Banks out over the midfield stripe. Spinning close to the first down marker. He'll be about a yard shy, but once again, that was probably a designed run yeah. the whole way. Absolutely. Play that little, that little fake play action, see if you can hold the backers. And again, play a little fake action there. Now that holds the backers. Now you roll strong side. You're looking downfield. He makes a quick decision to try to get that first down yardage. Mississippi State trying to get a lot of shirts there. I'd be a little bit concerned about my quarterback getting hit when he's spinning and trying to pick up that last yard. Third down and one for the Volunteers. Off the right side, Jabari Davis. If you got over the 45, inside the 45, it'll be a first down and they will move the chains. Well, this is just what we used to call big man on big man. Nothing fancy, just come off the line of scrimmage. Everybody just blows them off and drives. The pitch to Cedric Houston. He gets inside the 40. Boy, Dave, this is just controlling line of scrimmage. You see, you talked about Cedric Houston. Look at that average, 5.7 yards. Boy, just come off the ball, look at this. Watch him see a little seam right in there, jump back in. Boy, that's a nice cut back against the grain. When he saw Hagen take the outside, get blocked, he just cut back inside. The 11th play of this drive coming up, and they've all been rushing. A missed tackle in the backfield. Houston able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Hagen finally runs him down along with Williams. Well, Mario Hagen is an outstanding linebacker. Watch this. Play square, plays across the face, gets in on the tackle, slides in there. When he gets his arms on you, he wraps you up. This tackle came from Willie Evans, number 36, but uh, you're not going to see many missed tackles from that no. man, Mario Hagan, at 6'3", 255 pounds, a senior out of Clarksdale, Mississippi. This is the big down. Third down, about three. Will often use it, walked off to the Tennessee sidelines. See if that will affect Tennessee here on the right side of the line. They'll roll to the left. Banks, nowhere to go. Flag down at the line of scrimmage. Josh Morgan, the first man on the spot for the Bulldogs. Boy, and if you're Mississippi State, you're saying, don't tell me we lined up in the neutral zone. If you're Tennessee, you're be you've been stopped. That's what you're hoping for. So against Tennessee, Mississippi State prevails on this play. Illegal formation on the offense. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. That penalty declined. Fourth down. This play wasn't going anywhere because the outside pressure by Goler was tremendous. See how he turns him back inside? Nowhere to go. Then you count on your backside help getting there. Even Goler gets back in on the tackle. So the Tennessee offense ran it, ran it, ran it till they couldn't run it anymore. And now they'll have to punt it away. Dustin Colquitt will punt it to Corey Banks, who stands at the 10. And Colquitt just nailed it out of the end zone. The wind happened to this is not funny if you're Tennessee, but the wind just died. It's been blowing the whole game and 
soon as he kicked it, it died. A 39-yard punt. We'll return to Starkville after this. Back in Starkville, Mississippi on a cool afternoon and a couple of dogs on hand today. See more than a couple. Count the mascot. Actually, that guy's probably pretty warm inside there. Or girl on a cool day. Gorgeous, but certainly temperatures dropped down in the 20s last night. Fan to fire. Passes caught. Just shy of the 30 out to the 29 yard line. It's Justin Jenkins, the junior. What a good pass, good completion. That's what you need if you're Kevin Fan. Good patience in the pocket. Look at this line, giving him some time. Look down here, starting to move around a little bit, but then he finds Jenkins out in the flat, picks up positive yardage. Second down and short. High formation. Red Reed drives out near the 35 yard line. Time now for our Chick fil A nugget of the game. And SEC head coaches with the longest tenure. They're both right here in Starkville at the same time. Jackie Sherrill and Philip Fulmer going at it. 12 years on this MSU sideline for Coach Sherrill and for Coach Fulmer, 11 years. Of course, uh, has spent not only as a head coach in Knoxville, but as an assistant coach and an injured Tennessee player, Rashad Baker, who uh, would be another Whoa. devastating blow defensively for this team. You're talking about perhaps their best player right now defensively. Well, there you see number 16. Let's see what happens. Oh, look at that leg gets underneath, gets rolled up in there. 16 is Rashad Baker. Looks to be an ankle area. Here we go, and I mean, this is how it's been for this defense. Richmond, Burnett, Simon, Neal, Veal, and then last week Robert Peace gets injured, so they've had to shake up their linebacking core coming into this game. And Rashad Baker, who has five interceptions to tie for first in the league, he's the active interception man in the Southeastern Conference in career interceptions with 10. Uh, you know, as mm. Coach Fulmer said, you know, there's nothing you can coach. I mean, these things are happening yeah. in game situations. And it's just a tough uh, pill to swallow for that man, and you hate to see it to a guy, anybody, but uh, really Rashad Baker, who has been uh, really playing well. Yeah, you take a lot out of that defensive secondary. Baker had five interceptions. I think that just kind of sums it up if you're a Tennessee fan this year. As a matter of fact, overall, this is an incredible number. 14 starters for Tennessee have missed at least one game. John Chavis, the defensive coordinator, has had to really work some magic just to get guys on the football field, and you know, for them, practicing has been a difficult because a difficult thing to do because they don't have enough bodies. Exactly. Guys are missing Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, and then they're coming back on Thursday and trying to play on Saturday. You can't you can't get any continuity like that. Well, the guys in the Tennessee coaches box will try to figure something out, but that's a big blow for the balls in that secondary. Bobble snap. Fant will take it on his own. And a flag down at the line of scrimmage on both sides of the field. Dave, I think what Kevin Fant did on that, the quarterback did a hard count. He came out and emphasized that first snap count, came out and really yelled it. And I think he may have drawn, as I see, he drew uh, Tennessee offside. I think Franklin was the one that jumped into the neutral zone. Offside, on the defense, five yard penalty, remains first down. Cabrera Franklin was the guilty party on that defensive line. Our Pizza Hut scoreboard, Iowa leading Minnesota. Can the Hawkeyes keep it rolling to a BCS championship game? Michigan, Virginia over NC State. How about Ohio State hanging in there top to BCS? Of course, a big day coming up with Michigan. And off. Off guard goes to Fred Reed. He gets three or four on the play. Well, it was interesting yesterday talking to Sparky Woods, the offense coordinator for Mississippi State. He said, we're going to try to make it a 10-yard gain. We're just going to try to move those chains 10 yards at a time, two, three downs, just move, keep the first downs going. 
there you see Sparky all the way down on the end. He's right there. He ran from the camera this week. <laughs> He's usually up here. <laughs> Second down and short, and the Bulldogs will get the first down behind Fred Reed. Fred, the sophomore out of Tampa, Florida. Franklin and Wilson converge for the tackle for Tennessee. And, you know, we... Well, you see the line of scrimmage move. They're getting people out of the way. If I'm Kevin Fan, I come right back into the huddle, and I say, hey, just keep on doing what you're doing. Controlling that line of scrimmage, getting a good drive block, picking up four or five yards. Check him with Buzz quickly. 50, Dr. Yeomans is working on him. Pass goes incomplete. Let's go back and check in with Buzz one more time for an injury update. Buzz? Yeah, Dave, more bad news for the volunteers. Trainer Keith Clemens says that Richard Baker has a sprained right knee. Doubtful that he'll return. Oh, boy. Thank you, Buzz, but uh, add him to the list. Oh, know? I know. It just keeps on going on. I'm, you know, when we, like you said, we were talking to Philip Fulmer. He said, I don't remember the last time I ever saw anything like this. I keep on asking my coaches, have you ever seen anything like this? And they keep on saying, no, coach. Thank goodness. Well, a hold against Mississippi State. We'll move it back. And it's it's strange. They've had some injuries on the offense, Dave, Tennessee, and, and don't want to keep harping on this, but it truly is amazing how many injuries they've had on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, it is unbelievable. Well, the, the telling tale is when you said 14 players have missed a game. 14 starters. Shotgun. Second and long. Fan. Nice throw to the right side. Ray Ray Bivens driven back. Jabril Wilson makes the stop for Tennessee after a gain of 10. Well, you can't give this much respect if you're a cornerback. Watch Ray Ray Bivens at the top. When he turns, the defensive cover's not even in the picture. Now you come up and you start breaking down. That's Miles, number three in the corner. You can't give that much cushion. There's Rashad Baker. Getting that knee iced. Yeah. Well, you can just see the dejection in his face as he sits there. He's a star. He's uh, he's quite a football player. Kevin Fant will call a timeout for Mississippi State with 1.34 to go in the first quarter, looking at a third down and 14 or so. Well, Tennessee and Mississippi State both looking uh, to become bowl eligible right now. You've got... Uh, you know, four of these teams, three of these teams trying desperately to get into the mix. Uh, of course, Alabama and Kentucky cannot. But South Carolina, boy, they have talked about things that have gone haywire. They've this week moved Corey Jenkins, their quarterback, to safety. I've heard about maybe bench yeah. a quarterback, but to put him on the other side of the ball. <laughs> From starter on <laughs> offense to starter on defense. Well, Lou uh, ran the offense last week. And, uh, didn't work real well as they what offense right they didn't have an offense last week they didn't score a point so uh, skip holds back in charge of running that South Carolina offense well coming up next week it's the Battle of Tennessee next Saturday as Jefferson pilot will bring you the SEC game of the week from Nashville Coliseum formerly a Another name, but have since dropped it. The Commodores' Hunter Hillenmeyer leads the conference in tackles with 140, while Tennessee's linebacking core of Keon Whiteside and Eddie Moore have led the ball defense all season. It should be a good one. Make sure you join us. That'll be next Saturday, 12:30 Eastern, 11:30 Central. Third down and 15. T. Millens in motion. Fan. Drop back over the middle, has receiver. Millens got hammered, couldn't hold on. 
The big hit came from Keon Whiteside, the senior out of Forest City, North Carolina. Well, when you're a, when you're a, a receiver, you got to come down with a catch. You see, Fan, he throws it, and he knows. Look at this. You got to catch that football. I know he's going to get hit. I know Whiteside comes in and smacks him, but you got to catch that football. You got to help your quarterback out. Whiteside has moved back inside. He's been outside inside in terms of his linebacker spot all season, but now move back to the inside. Nearly blocked. Cook gets it away. Mark Jones stands at the 15. Flag down the hold coming against Tennessee as Jones still on his feet. Jones will go the distance. A 41-yard punt, an 85-yard return. Boy, for Philip Fulmer, you can see that scowl, that little yellow hanky right there. That's the holding call. That's going to negate a touchdown run. For Fulmer, that really hurts. First, there was almost a block. This would be very slow in punting the ball. You can't be that slow. See the Tennessee player coming in there, and that was close to being blocked. But then you don't allow a return like this. A holding hanky comes out. Boy, that negates a huge play. What a turn of events. Mm. Oh. During the return, that holding on the receiving team, half the distance to go. Push out. Dave, we may be able to see right there. You see the hold right in there? That's what they're. Oh, yeah, he's got him clamped up in there. That's Leonard Scott. Can't do that. Got to get those hands off him. Leonard knows Burnett. He's That's a kick returner. He knows how much that hurts when your teammates hold. High formation, Tennessee backed up again, and they'll run it. Out over the 20 near the 25 goes Cedric Houston. Josh Morgan rides him to the ground, but Tennessee has been able to run the ball. They started at the five their last drive and got it into Mississippi State. Well, the reason they're able to run the football is they're locking up with the defenders and nobody's getting off a block. You see at the point of attack, everybody's locked up. If you're a defensive lineman, you got to shed that block. You got to move to it. Got to use those hands. If you're an offensive lineman, just keep on rolling. Once again, a couple of tight ends in the game. McClure and Witt. They'll try the right side. Houston gets a couple on the play. Hagan and Clark converge for the tackle. You see Mario Hagan, number 98, plays across, spins off. Oh, is he being held? Boy, is he being locked on? <laughs> wow, that's Michael Munoz. And Hagan's tough. You can see he got up, he was shook up a little bit. But he just kind of shakes it off and comes right back in there. Munoz and Oppen Musil back on the offensive line for Tennessee this series. Banks' first pass nearly picked off, and who almost had it? Mario Hagan. <laughs> if Hagan ever drops one like this again, this is unbelievable. It goes right between his hands. Good pressure on the play. Look at this, right in the face of the quarterback. That's what you want to do. That's Jason Clark. Now watch Hagan, right side of your screen. Look at this, right between his hands. Oh, mercy, look at this. He's got it. Nobody in front of him. Well, Dave, I tell you, if you go back and look at his right hand, it's all wrapped up with tape. That might be part of the reason. Absolutely. That's a good, a very good point. Little delayed handoff. Big hole. Out to the 34-yard line. That's right about where the first down marker is. And that'll do it for the first quarter. We are scoreless in Starkville on a cool but glorious afternoon for SEC football. We'll return after this message from Texas Pete. We are scoreless moving to the second quarter here at Scott Field, Davis Wade Stadium. It's not the dog days of summer anymore. <laughs> Well, on fourth and short, Tennessee will punt it away. Corey Banks back to return the punt. It's a line drive. Banks has plenty of re return room. 
Out over the 40 and a flag comes down late. A 42 yard kick, 17 yard return. Or the push in the back. That is, that's just such a useless foul. From the illegal block in the back on the receiving team, 10 yard penalty, first down. Here's our Gatorade first quarter stats. Been all Tennessee for the most part. Yeah, all on the ground. They have chewed up some turf between the tackles today, but nothing to show for it, and Mississippi State has decent field position. First down is Sparky Woods told us the offensive coordinator yesterday where first down was was the down yeah. that they needed to be successful on. And I think he just got a free five yards on that. You heard that hard count again, and you see him as soon as that center sees that jump into neutral zone, he snaps it, gets a free five yards. Well, if you can't get it the conventional way. Offside <laughs> on the defense, five yard penalty, first down. When I, I wish I had a dollar for every time, and John Chavis will tell you how much you practice that. You're out there, those coaches are yelling, they're snapping, you're screaming, and then you got to go on movement. Hagan getting that hand worked on, but uh, he's a warrior. And you know, he'll be back on that field. By the way, Norwood, the true freshman, number 12, in the backfield for Mississippi State. He gets the handoff and runs right into Keon Whiteside. That's Whiteside's third stop already today. Norwood out of Brandon, Mississippi. Everybody's parade All-American. He came in with Nick Turner, who has been suspended from this Mississippi State team as two highly touted freshman running backs that were high school All-Americans. He was the Mississippi Class 5A Player of the Year. And here's a guy who hit the end zone 92 times in high school. Fourth in Mississippi high school history. Trying to get the corner, gets it to the 41, and that should be enough for the first down. And Dave, you know what Norwood did on that play? That play was designed to go off tackle, and he jumps to the outside and picks up good yardage. Got good black on the uh, good block on the outside. Hutchins gets a good block. Now watch this. Come inside. See, that's where it was designed to go. Now jump outside. Get use that speed to get those legs. Get out there. And looking at Norwood, about the only thing he needs is about 10, 15 pounds. Get up about 200, he'll be outstanding. Well, Dave, they did not get the oh. first down. He was short of it by about uh, six inches from where they spotted the ball. Well, that time he got it. Well, what he gives you, what Norwood gives you, is a back that can make three, four, five yards, and then all of a sudden pick up that 35, 40 yarder when he uses that speed and gets to the outside. Jackie Sherrill, real high on Norwood. And he's high on Nick Turner if Nick yeah. Turner comes back to this football team, which Jackie seems to think will happen yes. down the road. Well, this is a big series. You've held Tennessee. You need to get something going on your offense. Fan to throw, steps in to that throw, but only gets a couple of yards. Justin Jenkins with the reception. Whiteside all over him. Yeah, Keon Whiteside, I really like his play. Number 50, look at this slide. Now, you see that ball, look how quickly he gets those feet coming and really breaks on it. He's got five tackles, he's moving to the football well. Well, he started the first five at middle linebacker, then last three was at weak side linebacker and then when the injury came to Robert Peach they've had to move Whiteside back to the middle. Peach got hurt against Miami last weekend. <laughs> Nothing doing there. Eddie Moore the strong side linebacker flying in there to Cause some havoc in the backfield. Well, when you when you shoot through and you're a linebacker, what you got to do is keep your eyes open, and that's what that was. That was a draw play. It's real easy to run right by a linebacker who's coming into that backfield and doesn't have his eyes open. Well coached, good football play. Betty Moore leads the team in tackles. Is 84 on the season now. It's a third and long for Mississippi State. Down at 
to 32. Guess who? 37. Eddie Moore. Well, they came with pressure. Great pressure from that outside. Eddie Moore comes. Omari Hand, number 91, gets a good jump. Top of your screen. You see him coming off the line. And look at Eddie Moore just kind of sneak through there. Again, he just finds the seam. There he is on the right of your screen. Just finds that little hole. Center can't come up and pick him off. Just an excellent play. Brad Weather, 64, saw him, but with Eddie's speed, just couldn't get over there quick enough. Cook will punt it away into the wind. Ray Ray, excuse me, Mark Jones back to return it. It was a low line drive that'll stop at the 25 and a flag down at the 45. 42 yard punt from Jared Cook. And Dave, that flag's about 10, 15 yards off the line of scrimmage. Personal foul. Jackie Sherrill has had some issues this season with uh, this season with the SEC officiating crews, and uh, was actually reprimanded earlier this yep. year by Commissioner Mike Slive. Well, that altercation happened on the coverage going downfield, so it's a post kick foul. During the kick, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. On the kicking team, 15 yards, so forth out. Buzz, you've got more on the call? Yeah, Dave. Rico Bennett, number 19, got locked up in coverage with one of the Tennessee Gunners, and Dave has talked about it a lot. These guys get involved with this chicken fighting, and this time it was a little more than chicken fighting, and the officials thought it was a little too much, and they put the 15 on them. Boy, now see the result of the penalty. Now all of a sudden you're, you're receiving the ball at almost midfield. You make them re-kick. And uh, you got a great chance to pick up yardage. <laughs> Mark Jones back to return the punt for Tennessee again. This time he stands at about the 45. Good kick, but Jones will take it. And a flag down. And three of them came in there. A 37 yard kick. Looks like Willie Evans might have gotten in there a little too quickly. We'll wait and see here, Dave. I was wondering if that was interference with the catch. He was too close into the, you know, the halo. Kick catch interference on the kicking team. Violation of the two-yard halo. What's that? Second quarter action will continue after this. We'll return after a message. Good time in Starkville today. Second quarter action, 10.59 to go. Shot Baker still being looked at on that Tennessee bench, and here come the crutches. He'll be making his way to that Tennessee locker room. The first down and 10 for the balls. Jonathan Wade, uh, true freshman, down because he had a knee down. That was one of the rare passing yeah. opportunities we see today. Exactly, because Cedric Houston has had a great day running the ball. They ran that ball 12 runs in a row, and he was an integral part of that. They're getting a the line of scrimmage control. They had to give it up, but they drove 55 yards on those 12 runs. There is Cedric. 18 rushes, just two passes today. Goodness. Here's Houston again. Cedric Houston inside the 40. Near the 35. He'll be a yard shy of the first down. When he just runs through a tackle. Watch this. He's going to come off the line. Jason Clark's got him in the backfield. He just waves at him. I like the way he runs. He controls the football, keeps it tight in there. Keeps that head down. He's got good leverage when he runs. 
Fedrick, six foot, 210 pounder. He's actually carried the load for Tennessee. 40% of their running game in the last two weeks has been behind him. There he is again, picks up the first down inside the 35. Mario Hagan with his fifth tackle. At halftime, we'll be taking a look at the Alltel halftime stats. Buzz Baker will join us for all of our halftime activities with 9.36 to go in the second quarter. Joe Lee Dunn looking on intently because one of his defenders is down on the ground. I can't see who that is at this moment. Tommy Kelly, the junior out of Jackson, Mississippi. He's a big boy at six yeah. foot six, 310 pounds. You really can't see what they're doing with him, but uh, boy, I'll tell you, if they lose Kelly up front there. Kelly's been playing well the last couple of weeks. He has 31 tackles on the season and leads the team in tackles for loss. With seven and a half. Well, we may be able to see him right here as Kelly on the play. You see how his leg kind of gets rolled up underneath him? That happens a lot when you're locked up into somebody and somebody hits you from the backside and rolls onto your legs and you're locked into that offensive lineman. Good sign. Good to see him up moving around. He's got a lot of tape on that yeah. left ankle. Probably yeah. have to tape that right one now. Tennessee looking at first and ten now. A little toss sweep. Here's Houston around the right side. Hurdles one defender inside the 20. Cedric Houston inside the 10. What a run from Cedric Houston. 34 yards. Dave, he makes that on his, just about on his own. He got a good block on the line of scrimmage, but he made three outstanding cuts. As he comes along right here, he knows he's going outside. It's a toss. Now, read that first block. Get outside here. Now, cut back inside. Get underneath the block. Run through tackles. Right there, you see him cut back to the outside. Then don't let, oh, man. And Troy Fleming's the one who gets the good block up front. Right in there. Boy, that's a good block. When you knock them on there, when you knock them on the ground, that's an outstanding block. Williams and Nash, as the point after, is up and good from Alex Walls, but Williams and Nash missed some tackles. Joe Lee Dunn said they can't afford to miss any tackles today. Cedric Houston over the century mark, and he puts Tennessee on the board first. Back after word from your local stations. And welcome back to Starkville. Tennessee cheerleaders with plenty to cheer about. Seven to nothing. The Vols on top of Mississippi State. One thing that will help Mississippi State's effort is if that man, Big Tommy Kelly, can get back on the field. They say he's got a sprained right ankle. You can see they're going to tape it up and see what he can do. But Dave Neal, one thing about it, boy, it's just once you get a nick like that, especially on a cold day, it's tough to get back out to. It is going to be interesting to see how that defensive line performs the rest of the way. Norwood takes it out to the 20. Some extracurriculars going on. Corey Larkins down there battling with some Bulldogs. The fans wanted a flag. One was not thrown. There was a foul like that against Mississippi State earlier in the half. Cubs are taking them 25 yards downfield. Man, oh man. Then he kind of just pushes him. He said, wait a minute, hold a second. What? <laughs> You're right, I think that is chicken fighting. <laughs> Goodness gracious. First and 10 coming up for Mississippi State. They have struggled offensively today. Devin fan, four of 10, throwing the football. They'll hand it off and it's put on the turf. A lot of white jerseys are around the football, and the balls have it. Willie Miles picks up the fumble recovery for Tennessee. His first this season. He has a couple 
of interceptions. But Mississippi State struggling in the turnover margin department, and they're bit once again. Well, Nora would just get sloppy with the ball. The ball gets raked out of them, and that's what you're taught if you're a defensive player. Come in there, tackle the football, get that hand in there. Norwood just got careless. MSU minus 12 in the turnover department this year. They've lost 13 fumbles, 17 interceptions. You can make that 14 fumbles now. And Tennessee knocking on the door inside the 30. Jabari Davis down inside the 15. And looks like we've got some activity along the fence and a couple of players going at it. All the way up against the fence, it's Jason Witten going up against Josh Morgan. Josh looks like he's coming out of that a little bit uh, slowly with a right, that's, that's bad cool. wheel down there. But those two guys were way past the play. Oh. They're 20 yards, 25 yards from the actual sideline. Unbelievable. We'll just maybe see this. You see Morgan's right there on the left of your screen. He just goes out, and then he just keep on driving them out. Drove them all the way over into the bushes. There's the bushes where they were locked up. That's Josh Morgan, 47. Now there's no harm there. I don't see if I didn't see a flag come down. The officials do a good job just separating them. Troy Fleming. Also over there for Tennessee, I thought did a nice job as he just didn't get involved. Yeah, exactly. He just trying to keep everybody away and let Witten and Morgan do their thing. Well, you know what you do if you're if you're a referee in this situation. Sometimes you just walk over, you talk to both teams, and say, "Hey, listen, let's cut it out, let's calm down, let's play football." And offsetting, dead ball, personal foul on oh. each team. On each team, the pump is offset. Well, that's a couple of uh, personal fouls that we've had today in this football game, and I think this officiating crew would better be a little bit careful so stuff like that doesn't uh, boil over to something much worse. And Jackie hot. Well, Jackie's hot, and Philip Fulmer doesn't. He's the far side of the field, so he really didn't see it. I think what happened to Jackie Sherrill was he said, hey, wait a minute, he drove our guy all the way off the field into the bushes. I think it's uh, just been a frustrating year for him, too. First down and 10 for Tennessee. The toss inside the 10 to Jabari Davis. Well, a lot of emotion in this football game. Joe Lee Dunn, he wants to play defense with emotion, but you got to play with control of emotion. You can't make foolish penalties. You got to get penetration. You let your plays speak for you. Eight, 15 and counting in the second quarter. Tennessee struck first on a 34-yard touchdown run just moments ago from Cedric Houston, who has now checked back in at tailback. That's Witten in motion. Banks will hand it off. Here's Houston inside the five. Touchdown, Volunteers. Cedric Houston powers his way for his second touchdown this afternoon. Another outstanding block by the fullback, Troy Fleming, on the play. He just comes and gets that lead dog safety. Just picks him out. You see Witt gets a good block. Look at Fleming, 27. He just drives him off the line. Just run behind the blocks. Philip Fulmer says, wait a minute, boy, this is this is what we want. We want to take the pressure off of James Banks, control it, see that one go for one point. Point after, up and good. Alex Walls in his career now 126 for 130 in point afters. Patrick Houston. This time he makes Tennessee 14 points better than MSU. 7.58 to go in the second quarter. Oh, look at that. Why didn't they tell us about the, not necessarily the score, the Chick fil A trade down there? How about that? 
You can get a free gallon of tea with purchases of Chick-fil-A Nugget Party Tray. It's certainly great to have them at your tailgate. And to celebrate the holidays, you can get that free gallon of tea with your Chick-fil-A Nugget Tray through November 30th. Tennessee to kick off after the back-to-back -to -back touchdowns from Cedric Houston, Jarius Norwood, and Fred Reed back to return the kick. It'll be Norwood from the goal line. Norwood out over the 20 to the 21-yard line. Marvin Mitchell makes the stop for Tennessee. Let's check in with Buzz down on that sideline. Buzz, Dave, the Mississippi State sideline all kind of lathered up. That chicken fighting play that Dave Rowe was talking about, they felt if a penalty had been called there, that wouldn't have led to the uh, mini melee in the bushes. But the bottom line is Mississippi State has lost composure a couple of times we've seen him this year. And when bad things have happened to him, they've had him in bunches. They need to settle down and have a good offensive series here. Yeah, and Buzz, the other thing about that is if they don't put it on the ground, Tennessee's not in that spot to score anyway. <laughs> Whiteside had his back to us. I thought for a minute he picked it off, but it came right back to him after it hit the turf. Flag White side, down. Whiteside had it. Ineligible lineman downfield. Wait a minute. That was about a two-yard drop and pass. Tennessee will move him back. I believe if that's the case. That's a pretty quick pass to get a lineman downfield. You're right, the white side had that ball right in his hands. And that was one man downfield against the offense. That penalty is declined. Second down. Tennessee was about to take it, and the coaches said, no, 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 no. Here's a white side right in the middle. Oh. Second down. Second down. Yep, he had it. Watch white side. Just read the quarterback. Look at this. Hit him right in the hands. Bounce right back up. And you know what, on that on that replay, I did see Carl Hutchins was downfield. He was about three, four yards downfield. Faint under pressure. Gets away at the 23-yard line. Jason Mitchell making his first career start as a redshirt freshman out of Abbeville, Louisiana. Boy, no time on this play. Tennessee just coming after him right now. Did great penetration, disrupt the pocket, collapse it around. When your quarterback puts his head down and starts to scramble, he can't see his wide receivers. He's just running for his life. And uh, Keon Whiteside, number 50, he's going to get back into play. Oh, wow. He just picks on somebody. Man, ouch. That's Ray Ray Bivens. He's a wide receiver. 87 total yards today for Mississippi State's offense. Fan steps in over the middle, pass incomplete, no flags. Donald Lee, the tight end, the intended target, Eddie Moore on the coverage. And that'll bring up a fourth down with 6.52 to go here in the second quarter. Boy, if you're Tennessee, that's a great series. You've just scored, you get in there, three and out, get the ball back to your offense. If you're Mississippi State, it just compounds. They've got to move chains to take pressure off of their defense. Yet another punt for Jared Cook. As Mark Jones stands at the 42. This is a floater that will be returnable. Jones out over the 45. A 35-yard punt, a six-yard return. Gabe Wallace makes the tackle. Well, football fans, register to win a million dollars in the Bell South Million Dollar Kick Contest. Visit jbsports.com to register and check out the schedule for the Bell South E-Zone rolling on to college campuses around the South. Sign up and then start practicing your field goals. The grand prize winner gets a chance to kick for $1 million at the 2002 Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl on New Year's Eve. And here comes Cedric Houston with a career high 120 yards. He has a couple of TDs give, to give him five rushing touchdowns on the year. And already over the century mark, and there's plenty of time left. 6.40 to go before halftime. Oh, but he fumbles the football. He got laid out and fumbled the football. They'll say Mississippi State has it back at the 48. Whistles are blowing all over the field. But the Bulldog defense desperately wants a touchdown. They will not get it. 
Boy, what a smack. Well, the foamer looks out there saying, you got to be kidding me. The play was a broken play from the start. You talk about penetration in the backfield. I don't this think he ever had the ball before he got hit. I think he bobbled it. Look at yeah. that smack. Jason Clark, number 40. I'm talking about just levels. So, Mississippi State's defense gets the football back for the offense. In good field position. Got to score in this situation. Time running down. And flags come a flying. Well, another one of those hard counts. That'll get John Chavis, the uh, defensive uh, coordinator, upset. You see him tap the head there. You see Moore tap the head saying, that's my fault. There's John Chavis. He's saying, wait a minute, we go on movement. We don't guess. You know, this is, uh, as you look at <laughs> Coach Chavis over there in disgust, but this is this is where Sparky Woods has to, I think, somewhat be, be a little bit creative on a short field like this in a short situation on first down. He's over at the far end of the screen, the offensive coordinator. Delayed handoff. Fred Reed goes nowhere. Yeah, that's, I didn't like that play selection, a little draw play on it. That's, that's not being creative. Big down here, third. You got you got to pick up second down. Excuse me, second down. You got to pick it up. Sparky Woods, why not try that tight end come across? Donald Lee's sitting there. Go to Justin Jenkins on that one on one at the top of the screen, but uh, at the top of the play, I should say now at the top of the screen. But again, be a, as you say, be a little creative. Go for it. They lost a yard on that play, so second down and six. Pressure coming. Fan gets nailed. Pass is caught. Couple of big hits, and Grendel's still on his feet. Grendel, a run out of bounds at the 10 yard line, and Kevin Fant is slow to get up. Willie Miles finally ran him out. Eddie Moore put the shot on Fant. Oh. A gain of 33, and that'll get the Bulldog fans on their feet. Well, Kevin Fant never saw the tail end of this play. Watch number 37. Moore just level him. But Grindel makes a great catch coming across the middle. You got to help out your quarterback. And watch this. You know you're going to get hit. You keep your balance now. Go to those afterburners. Get to the outside. And Dave, you saw number 10 in there. Mark Jones missed the tackle, didn't wrap up. That's where Baker, exactly. who's out, would have been. Fan to throw. Pitch is tied in. Donna Lee, touchdown, Bulldogs. <laughs> You know what? I'm not sure that Kevin Fan has recovered yet from that big hit, but he throws a touchdown strike right there, and all of a sudden you get the feeling that Mississippi State has got some momentum. They had nothing before this series. Mississippi State coach is still not... Uh, Excited at this point. Still down a touchdown. Brent Smith, who one time tried to walk on to the Tennessee football team, hits the point after. So Donald Lee with his first touchdown reception of the season and Kevin Fant's ninth touchdown pass. Well, you see the tight end 84. What he does is he fakes the block. He's a big target at 6'4. Not often used. But what you do is you fake that block, then slip out. And you're wide open. Again, little play fake action there. Roll the strong side. Look for your tight end. When he comes open, and he comes open right away, get him the football. So both teams have scored a touchdown after a fumble. Donald Lee, 6'4", 250-pounder, uh, a senior who coaches say is, uh, matter of fact, Tennessee coaches even give us this opinion that Donald Lee's a guy that can play at the next level. That's how good he is. Yep. Kevin Fant, 6 of 14, 70 yards, and I think he's a little woozy. You know, he said last week, Dave, uh, against Alabama that late in the game he got a little bit tired and he got a little bit gun shy in the pocket. He just got hit and hit and hit and hit and said that caused some problems for him late in the fourth quarter. Let's check in with Buzz. You know, Dave, after every series,
Yankees. Kevin Fant gets on the phone and he talks to Sparky Woods up in the booth. They've talked earlier about some coordinators being on the field. Woods says he talks to Fant all the time. He says he spends more time with him than he does with his wife. Of course, if he's on the phone right now, he's saying the lights are on, but nobody's home. He took a big hit when he came off the field. Jackie Sherrill said, are you all right? And it took him about three times for him to answer. We'll take the seven. A short kick that drifts out of bounds. And Tennessee will get it at the 35. And that is not a good kick for Brent Smith. I told you about Brent. He, out of high school, didn't was a soccer player, didn't kick much. And... I had a buddy that go to the University of Tennessee to play football. Kick infraction on the kicking team. Kick out of bounds. Ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. So Brent goes with his buddy up to Tennessee and wants to walk on as a kicker. And one of the graduate assistant coaches for Tennessee invited the walk-ons out there. Next day he shows up hoping his name would be on there. Invited to come with the rest of the team to practice. Didn't see his name. Still wanted to kick. Went to junior college and worked his way here. Is it Mississippi State kicking? There's a great history of walk-on players. Some outstanding players have been walk-on. Gain of only a yard. Cedric Houston to Jackie Sherrill is furious again. Jackie has been, he's still going at it. He is right in that official's face. Why, I don't know, but again, you get a little bit more pop when your offense scores and you get that you get that surge, your defense gets a little pop. But look at Jackie Sherrill. I mean, he was wearing out that official. And that was the nice part of the conversation. Yes, it was. You're right. Jabari Davis. That defensive line standing tall now. Boy, Mario Hagan, you talk about stepping up, making a block into that hole. I mean, just kind of look at him coming up here. He doesn't get to it right away, but look at him just forcing up in there. Then he gets help from the rest of his line. You can see 98 in the back. He's got his hands on him. He's a rock in that middle. Well, this crowd is quiet for really a quarter and a half but the fumble moments ago by Tennessee that set up Mississippi State's touchdown has brought the Starkville folks to their feet and a timeout taken by Tennessee that'll be their second time out of the half with 403 to go before intermission The last time these two teams met was in the 1998 SEC championship game. The undefeated Vols were looking for their second straight SEC title, but the Bulldogs took a 14-10 lead in the fourth quarter after a Kevin Prentice 83-yard punt return for a TD. Tennessee, though, they weren't finished. T. Martin would throw two touchdown passes in just 28 seconds as the Vols won 24-14 on their way to their first national title since 1951. You know, that day, that was a crazy day. UCLA and Kansas State actually lost that day as well. That afforded Tennessee the opportunity to go to the national championship game. That's why you play them out. Uh, you know what? I was just thinking exactly what you said last week. The game is 60 minutes long. That's why you play the entire game. That's why you play a full schedule of games. You know, it's... Commissioner Roy Kramer, the uh, former commissioner of the Southeastern Conference, when that BCS came out and he was the point man, he says, you know, everybody's complaining about it, and whether it's an argument for a playoff system or not, was he says, you know, just don't complain about the BCS just yet. Let everything evolve before you make a judgment. All the games haven't been played yet, and I've always remembered that. Yep. I don't remember much. <laughs> Banks still on his feet and finally brought down at the 30-yard line. Jason Clark will get credit for the sack. Josh Morgan joined in on the party. And Tennessee will punt it away. And Dave, when your pocket collapses and you get this pressure and you start looking like that, you can't see your receivers. All you're doing is just trying to run to get out of trouble. And you can see he was in deep trouble. Look at Josh Morgan, number 47. You think they're not excited? They're going to get the football back. 
Colts. It's punt. Mississippi State got a punt last week against Alabama. Here's Banks. Corey Banks to the 35 with three. 14 to go before halftime. 44-yard punt, a 10-yard return. Pizza Hut scoreboard. Kentucky over Vandy, 7 to nothing. You know the Wildcats couldn't wait to get back onto the field. Iowa over Minnesota, 28 to 14. Kansas State over Nebraska. Continue to be a struggle for the Huskers. Michigan and Wisconsin tied up in the third. Virginia over NC State in the ACC. Interesting story with Corey Banks and, uh, and, then, and Iowa. We'll get to that a little bit later. Handoff goes to Dante Walker. Whiteside brings him down. Walker, the big back who was expected to have a breakout season in his final campaign, has, uh, well, it's been a struggle to say the least. Yes. But uh, see there, you see his results, the, uh, the yardage. He just hasn't had a chance this year. I mean, he just really hasn't had the opportunity. Came back in a little bit heavy. Everybody said, hey, it's just not been his year. His career has been a success, but yeah. this season has not. No, it really hasn't. But it's nice to see him get an opportunity. He swings out of the backfield, but won't even sniff the football as Fant goes hard to the deck, and he looks hurt. Remember, he came in with a bad ankle. Boy, he's, he's reaching left. He's reaching for that ankle right now. A lot of tape on that shoe. Yeah, he can't get up. He's, uh, he's been rolled over. Pocket collapsed around him right on top of him. And it looks as if you see the tape on that ankle. Again, watch his pocket just collapse. You see him, he's going to get, he gets stepped on, too. That was another thing that happened. Then they just kind of roll him back over and take him down. You get that ankle twisted up underneath you, that hurts. Well, Kyle York, uh, luckily for the Bulldogs, has seen plenty of action this year. Actually started the opening game when Kevin Fant was suspended by the NCAA. So York will get loose in a hurry, the redshirt freshman. Out of Spring, Texas. It's 44 of 89 on the season for 450 yards, has nine interceptions. I mean, one touchdown to his credit, but uh, that ankle looks bad for yeah. Kevin Fant. Well, you know what? Look, it's interesting to watch York. What he's doing, he's warming up passing. He's not taking snaps. You think about a quarterback taking snaps. Good to see Fant up, walk off the field. He's walking off gingerly, but usually you think about taking snaps because that's the first part of the play. But York just throwing that football. Fant has been sacked 21 times this year. Well, here's Kyle York. See what he can do as he looks at a third down and a dozen yards with 217, 215 and counting now before halftime. We'll throw. And off of Donald Lee, the tight end, Lee should have had it. That would have been a first down, but instead, Bulldogs have to punt. Boy, absolutely. Good pressure. Watch Keon Whiteside come in there. Gets up in the quarterback's face, jumps over. And again, Donald Lee should have had this ball. That's right in his hands. Look at that. you got to come up with that one. We make a touchdown catch, and then you drop an easy one. Jared Cook will punt it away to Mark Jones again. Very returnable punt. Here's Jones to the 40, and he'll hit the deck there. So Tennessee will take over. Pretty good field position with 154 to go before halftime. They have spent two timeouts here in the first half. Tennessee and Vanderbilt coming your way next Saturday right here on JP Sports, 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 Central time. That'll be from Nashville at the Nashville Coliseum. Be sure and join us. The last time Tennessee traveled to Nashville, pretty interesting uh, contest. Absolutely. Went down to the wire. Here's a handoff to Jonathan Wade, the speedster. 
out over midfield. Darren Williams brings him down. Gain of 11. Dave, all of a sudden now you look over to the sideline, you say, hey, wait a minute, we've got the ball midfield. Still got a minute and a half left. Maybe we can get down to get in field goal position if you're Philip Fulmer and his squad. If you're Mississippi State, you're trying not to make a mistake. Randy Sanders, the offensive coordinator. Let's see if he goes, tries to get that field goal position. Tennessee has rushed the football 29 times today. They've only thrown it twice. Delayed handoff, a couple of broken tackles. Troy Full Fleming, the fullback, picks up nine on the play, so the clock still ticking. Tennessee with one timeout left. Jason Clark. Missed the tackle on that play, Jason Clark did. When he came up, he just arm tackled. He had him in the backfield. Mississippi State is plagued by missed tackles. They've got seven already in this game. Second and short. Tennessee will stay on the ground, pick up the first down, stop the clock. This would be a heartbreaker right here for Mississippi yeah. State to pull within a touchdown. And if Tennessee continues to uh, move the football here, put some points on the board before halftime, that will sting a little bit. Stay tuned. Coming up at halftime, we'll be highlighting the best in the SEC presented by Don Pablos. Dave Baker will join us. Best in the SEC. Hmm. I wonder what the best play was last week. <laughs> That's an easy one. Banks in trouble. Banks goes down at the 40, loses about six on the play. Jason Clark with the tackle for Mississippi State. Boy, does that change the complexion. Now you're down under 30 seconds. Now if you're Mississippi State, you come after him. Here comes a blitz. Banks gets hit as he throws, throws it up and out of bounds. And Jason Witten was the intended receiver, but now Tennessee in a precarious situation with one timeout, 18 seconds left. Now you switch sides here exactly. and say Mississippi State gets the stop. They're going to be happy. Exactly. I mean, I actually thought Tennessee was going to get in good field position. They had the ball on about the 36-yard line. They had about, well, about 50 seconds left. Now they're at 18 seconds left, and they've got third down. Of course, Joe Lee Dunn, the defensive coordinator, trying to get that pressure. Get his guys rush the passer. That's Here comes he... another blitz. And Banks goes down and fumbles the football. Do the Bulldogs have it? Yes, they do. Jason Clark recovered the fumble. It was forced by Michael Goler. Well, when your strong safety's coming in and Goler's the one who causes it, number 20, when you get a fumble up in this field, you see right there, Goler ripped that ball out. And look at Joe Lee Dunn. All right, finally, we're getting, this is positive. Offense, now, you've got 11 seconds. Can you get in field goal range? And Mississippi State has some timeouts left. But with 11 seconds, it's only a couple of plays no matter how you slice it. Kevin Fant back in the game for the Bulldogs. Low snap, fan on a bad wheel, up over the middle, and that ball floated. And Justin Jenkins had his hands on it but couldn't bring it down. Well, there's an old saying in football: if you get your hands on it, you got to catch it. Jenkins had his hands on it; he had both hands on it. Good coverage on the play. You know, Dave. Five seconds left here before halftime. You just never know yeah. what's going to happen, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Especially after last week. <laughs> you just never know. By the way, our spotter Kim Anderson decided to go home after the Kentucky yeah. field goal and well he missed history. That a boy, Kim. <laughs> Said he got to the parking lot. <laughs> Pass is caught. But a lot of white jerseys in the way. Grendel runs out of bounds and that'll do it for the first half a 28 yard gain but it's a 14 to 7 football game after Tennessee went on top 14 to nothing
It has been a hard hitting contest. Not pretty as neither team's been able to throw the football very well, but Tennessee's been able to rush it. The Cedric Houston has 120 yards on the ground and two touchdowns to lead the Volunteers. And our two coaches are at midfield right now talking with our referee, Thomas Ritter. And play has been a little... Uh, well, there's been a lot of... Teams have been a little frisky yeah. out there. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Very frisky. And that's not a bad call. The official takes them both out there and starts to talk to them. Well, Buzz uh, waiting to catch up with Coach Fulmer, and he has him. Buzz? Philip, you were able to establish that running game early on and then put the ball on the ground, uh, put the ball on the ground twice. Well, you, when you turn the ball over, it's going to lead usually to bad things, and it's certainly got them back in the football game. We've got to come back, relax our young quarterback, and start hitting it up in there again. And he'll make a play along the way somewhere that will help us. But right now, we've got to take it as much as we can out of his hands. A lot of emotion in this game. Is that what you and Jackie were talking about with Actually, the Tom Ritter? Yes, yes. With the officials, yes, sir. We'll, we'll handle that. We've got to handle that. Both teams got to keep their poise. All right. Thanks, Coach. We appreciate it. Philip Fulmer going to the locker room. His Tennessee Vols lead the Mississippi State. Tennessee leads 14 to 7 as we are moments away from the third quarter. Just moments ago, Dave Baker caught up with Jackie Sherrill. Jackie, they got out to the lead. Your guys created some turnovers and got yourself back in the ball game. Well, we're, right now, we, I mean, we have the ball in the third quarter, so, you know, the first five minutes is uh, very, very important. You know, we gave them the punt, the penalty on the punt, which gave them field position. They came right back and gave them the fumble. They gave us the fumble, and we came back and capitalized on that. So, you know, we it's really going to, this day, because of the, the weather or the wind, oh, yeah. you know, it's, it's the kicking game very, very important. What about the official summit at the end of the half? Well, that was, you know, they wanted to make sure that we get control, meaning yep. that, and my comment is that, you know, we'll, we'll take care of our players. Thanks, Jackie. Good luck second half. That's Jackie Sherrill, Dave. All right, Buzz. You always know where you stand with Jackie. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a, that's a difficult one. You want, you want your players to play with emotion. With the wind at his back. The kickoff sails to the goal line. Jarius Norwood with a decent return. 32 on that return. Well, Kevin Fant twisted an ankle right before halftime. And he has taken a beating today, much like he did last week. Well, he made something out of nothing on the scramble. That was a great play. He's had an up and down half. You talk about the ankle that he, the injury. But boy, I mean, one time he got, that was it. He got leveled. Wow. But he found his tight end and turned a fumble into a touchdown, and that got him back in this football game. He's been courageous. He's been hurt. He stayed in the pocket. It'll be interesting to see what the second half holds for him. He gets nailed again. The pass is dropped again. Justin Jenkins and boy, I'm telling oh. you, it's it's tough being quarterback. Watch this. You get rid of the football, and just as you get rid of it, you're going to get leveled, driven into the ground. You got about a 280 pounder on your back. That's Omari Hand. Fant now seven of 17 for 97 yards, and you know he made a. a conscious effort to himself to stay in the pocket a little bit longer today and not get happy feet and oh <laughs> my feet may get me getting happy if I was back there Tennessee come with a lot of pressure Fred Reed bounces his way to the 36 yard line by the way Rashad Baker the safety for Tennessee who twisted his knee is out of the football game will not make his return also understand that Derek Tinsley, number 20, has uh, got hit on the head pretty hard, and uh, he is iffy to come back as well. Third and five. Here's Reed on the draw. Didn't get it. Did not get the first down, and the Bulldogs will have to punt on their opening possession of the third quarter. Boy, the line play has been tough up front. This is good play. Look at that. Get in there. Just take that double team and lean over to the football. React to it. That's Rashad Moore, number 58. That's playing the double team well. Don't get crushed on down. Get those hands moved to the ball. Mark 
Jeff Jones back to return the punt once again of Jared Cook. This punt will stop at the 35. And not a great effort from Jared Cook, a 30-yard kick. And Tennessee now takes over, and Jackie, who coaches the punters and kickers, having a chat with his punter, the sophomore out of Columbus, Georgia. And you know what? That's a great thing right there. That's real coaching. When you walk up to him, you say, okay, look, remember your mechanics, know what you got to do, don't panic. There's Cedric Houston today, already a career high, 120 yards rushing. He went for 100 last week against Miami the week before. He went over 100 against South Carolina. The young fella having a great day. It's hit by three Bulldog defenders, the last of which was Hagan, the first two, Clark and Jackson. Second and eight. Jackson again on the tackle for Mississippi State. The junior out of Decatur, Georgia. And Dave, that's when you make a stop if you're Mississippi State. You make a stop when you make that running back. As he comes into the line, you start making him run this way. Don't allow him to get up through that line of scrimmage and you react to the football. For Tennessee, they drove so well in the first half. I mean, they had a lot of yards. They just need to go back to it. And you get a feeling that uh, the momentum of this football game may be changing. Banks to run. James Banks keeps running forward for about five yards and then runs backwards. <laughs> well, that's such a threat to have a quarterback that can run the football, and it's still so defeating for a defense. You get good pass, you get good pass rush, and then all of a sudden he just scoots up through there. For Philip Homer, he loves it. First down for Tennessee. But for the best deals on cars, trucks, and SUVs, visit your local Toyota dealer today. There's Casey Clawson on the headsets. Staying warm without his uniform on today. He's a spectator. Houston got hit after he picked up about a yard by Lil Nash. You know, we see Casey Clawson over there on the Tennessee sideline. Also not here, not even with the team, is wide receiver Kelly Washington, who has uh, been bothered uh, with a concussion. And earlier today, we got a statement regarding the uh, Kelly Washington, and it said that the uh, UT athletic medical staff coordinated further consultation of sophomore wide receiver Kelly Washington earlier this week. The specifics of that consultation have not been released. Kelly is not here in Starkville. Houston gets maybe a couple of yards, but he's making a go. Going to make it third and long now for the balls. Well, that was a great play at the corner. When you come up there, you, you take the force, you come up there, ride along the line here, and then force it back inside and get on the play. That's just outstanding. That's goaler, number 20. That's the way you want to play that. Force it, force it, come off and make the tackle. Third down conversions, third for eight. But, uh, well, Mississippi State fans had made it through three quarters of the season without being penalized. Last week they were stung with uh, a penalty for the cowbell infraction, or I guess a couple of weeks ago, I should say. And they were just warned for the cowbells once again. is high on third down. Ten receiver is Jonathan Wade. Corey Banks on the coverage. Corey, <laughs> interesting chat with the senior corner yesterday. Yeah, I really like Corey Banks. A lot of fun, a lot of emotion. Puts, a, puts excitement back in the game. Corey will step back to return this punt. Speaking of the cowbells, if, if those of you hadn't paid attention to it this year, the SEC has banned and the cowbells from Scott Field and said that if uh, the officials feel that they are a major distraction, they can be whistled 
for a 15 yard penalty. Here's Banks. Good coverage from Tennessee. Franklin on a tackle for the Volunteers after the 44 yard punt, a seven yard return. The Bulldogs down by seven, trying to even the score here. We'll return to Starkville after a message from Advance Auto Parts. Cool here in Starkville, <laughs> but if you got your blankets and your thick coach and your caps, you should be all right. Not so bad. We got a pretty good one 14 7. 10 18 to go in the third quarter. Bulldog fans still in this, thinking that if they can win here, maybe the Bulldogs have a chance to win out and get to a ball game. But that's not a good way to do it. Loose football, it's alive. Touchdown, Tennessee. Dickerson forced the fumble. Rashad Moore picks it up for a touchdown. Oh, my. Talk about Freeman, the quarterback, when he never saw it. Dickerson's going to come from his blind side. He doesn't see it from the back side and just collapses. Kevin Fan. Watch this. Left of your screen, you're going to see him come in here. And look at this. Just collapses the quarterback. The ball comes out. They pick it up. Picked up by Rashad Moore, and he just lumbers into the end zone for a touchdown. Only had to go about five yards for the touchdown, but... The point after up and good, but Dave, once again, a turnover hurts Mississippi oh. State in a bad way. We mentioned it coming into this, their turnover margin. They were minus 12. Well, Rashad Moore does a great job. You see him left your screen, just kind of get rid of the guard and just come in there and reach in when he tackles him. The quarterback never sees him because it's coming from the backside. Then what you do is you just pick up the football and go. Again, there's Rashad Moore picking up that uh, errant fumble, and he turns it into seven points. That's Moore's third fumble recovery this season. Well, I can tell you, that's a lot of fun for a lineman, but it's no fun for a quarterback. Fan just uh, talk about a difference in emotions. Oh. You see it right there. Let's check in with Buzz. You know, Dave, yesterday when we were talking to Sparky Woods, he said we don't need to play Kyle York for Kyle. We need to play him for Kevin. And Fan has shown incredible courage out here. But but he's to the point now he knows that from a pain standpoint, he can't take another hit on that ankle. And he's kind of starting to look for it a little bit. So it'll be interesting to see what Sparky Woods and company do next time the dogs get it back here in just a second. Well, it's two fumbles that have resulted in 14 Tennessee points today. And the Vols lead is 14. 10.09 to go in the third quarter. Mississippi State has lost 13 of their last 15 SEC games. And it has been a struggle. Norwood and Reed. And this will be Fred Reed. Reed out to the 27-yard line. Marvin Mitchell makes the tackle. 23-yard return. So let's see who is coming out. Is it Vance or is it York? You know, I think York is the one that's going to come out. And I think it's a good, it's a good series because your quarterback's just got rattled. He's got knocked down. Let York take a series, see if he can put some put some points, get this offense moving. Fant in serious pain. Talking to Rob Morgan, a former quarterback here at Mississippi State. Norwood out over the 30 to the 34. Julian Battle on the stop for Tennessee. Battle the senior at a Royal Palm Beach, Florida. It really changes the offense. When you bring in a new quarterback, the sounds are different, the calls are different, the receivers aren't receiving the ball the same. It just, everything just seems to change. You hope that you can run four or five players, get a little bit of continuity, get that quarterback getting a little bit of a feel. Handoff goes right behind the center to Norwood. Stephen Marsh makes the tackle, not much there. And I'm wondering how Justin Griffith missed uh, last week uh, with a bad ankle. And he's not 100%. And I wonder how much that's affected him because 31 came in here. Uh, you know, 292 yards on the ground, 60 carries. 
Uh, I've been playing real well and he had been a factor today yeah, has not been not been able to use him coming out of the backfield that they, they love that little swing pass to him get him in that one on one with the backer. That's an audible. George pass. Bobbled and then caught. Darrell Garendo. First down Mississippi State after the gain of 16. But once again, it was uh, not picture perfect over there from 15's point of view, although he did lose a shoe. Well, two step drop now. Throw it to Grendel and look at the great concentration. Look that ball in. Now you have to credit Tennessee because you see the reaction, everybody running to the football. Jason Mitchell makes up on the play. Grendel now with three catches for 76 yards. You look at Sparky Woods, the offensive coordinator. But Dave, I'm still, uh, you know, I haven't seen any good, crisp passing catches. Yeah. York calls a timeout with 8.39 to go in the third quarter. We'll step aside as well. Stay with us on JP Sports. 21-7, third quarter action. SEC Game of the Week on Jefferson Pilot Sports. East and West going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. First time since, well, you got to go back to 95 that these two clubs have met in the regular season. As the Bulldogs look at a first down and 10 from midfield. A little toss sweep. Norwood into Tennessee territory. Tackle made by Wilson, his third from a safety spot. And Dave, you can see the talent that Norwood has. He makes a nice slice to the ball. He needs to be a little bit stronger in there. He needs to pick up 10, 15 pounds, get in that 200 pound range, but don't lose the speed that he has. In motion goes Darius Tubbs. Here's the pitch again. Norwood bounces to the outside and has great speed and can't get by. Mark Jones in that secondary and a good tackle by Jones or Norwood might have gone for six. It was a gain of 17. Well, good block by the fullback, Justin Griffin, 31. Right there. Knock him out, cut back off of that. Now, they don't rack you up, get those legs down. But a good tackle from the, from the secondary again. Watch this. Good block to the outside now. When you get out there, just put your head down. But that's a great tackle. Mark Jones, number 10, comes up when he latches on you. You ain't going anywhere. So again, Mark Jones getting a lot of snaps because Rashad Baker out with a bad knee. Locked it up in the air. Crowd wants a flag. So does the Bulldog bench. And they'll get it. Jason Mitchell was holding Justin Griffith on the play. This is play action where you sneak that fullback out into the flat. It didn't fool Tennessee, but they had no idea where the ball was. Jason Mitchell had the coverage on him, and he just kind of held on to him. You see him there saying, well, I didn't hold him, but he interfered. Griffith, the guy. Pass interference on the defense. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Griff is just a guy, Dave, that coaches love because he's a he's a competitor and a warrior. Absolutely. Throwback, you see him going out in the flat, getting interfered with. He had the hand on his, looked like he had a hand on his shirt, holding him. But if you're a Mississippi State, you've got to score in this situation. Take that pressure, put it back on Tennessee. And Mississippi State uh, desperately looking for any break, and they got one there. First and 10, just outside the 20. There goes Griffith. Griffith, what a uh, pleasant conversation oh. we had with him. A sharp, intelligent, well-spoken, humble human being. Absolutely. Good fishing into the hole. Again, you try to break tackles, you try to drag, you try to fall for yards forward, and he runs through Stephen Marsh. We just uh, had a good time talking with, talking with him. Said he was more nervous uh, giving a sermon the other day at church <laughs> than he was about it playing in front of 60,000. Down to the 10. That might be good enough for a first down. Right. right side makes the tackle. And how about Justin Griffith? He wants more. He's saying, hey, give me that ball. And Jackie Sherrill's giving it to him. Well, we were wondering where he was. There's a sold out 54,807. The majority of them are wearing the maroon and white. Well, if I was the offense coordinator, I'd go right back to him again. Why change? 
York to throw, receiver slips. Garindo was the intended receiver. Kentucky over Vandy, 28 to seven. That'll be number seven, only the second team, seven wins, only the second team since 1984 to post seven wins at Kentucky if they can hold on. Kansas State over Nebraska, Michigan over Wisconsin, Virginia up on NC State. Darnell Jones in at fullback, but York keeps it and doesn't go too far with it. Amari Hand right on the spot. Now that is a great example of how you play the pitch, man. You make him run, you freeze the quarterback. Watch Hand come in here. You freeze the quarterback, then you come right up and you just smack him down. Amari Hand, number 91. He's got the quarterback. He made him pay. Now you got to go to a pass. You know what's amazing? You ran the ball down here. And John Chavis knows that's the hey, now they're going to pass. Dig back in there. Griffith back on the field. He's the single setback. Pass is caught down inside the five. It'll go to Donald Lee. Gain of seven, but the Bulldogs are shy of the first down. The first down marker is about a half a foot away from the goal line. Boy, and what a what a good call. Donald Lee coming off the line. Now the big man trying to stretch in there. Again, what do you do? You go for the well, touchdown? Yeah, it's easy for me to say up here. You're you're winless in the league. And yeah. Go for it. What the heck? That's right. Timeout taken by Mississippi State as they debate what to do, but it's been a pretty good drive for the Bulldogs. Well, fans, now is your chance to enter Toyota's You Pick 'em Sweepstakes. Just go online at jpsports.com, click on the Toyota banner to register and pick the winners. Weekly prizes will be given to the participant with the highest point total. The grand prize winner to be announced on next Saturday will receive a new 2003 Toyota 4Runner, the Toyota You Pick 'em Sweepstakes. See jpsports.com for the official rules. Entrance must be legal residents of the states of Florida, Alabama, Georgia, North Carolina, or South Carolina. So he, here we go. We got 531 to go in the third quarter. You're down 14. You haven't been down here all game. Yeah, I'm with you. I think you go for it, obviously. Two schools of thoughts. Do you throw the football in that slant? Do you try the little rollout? John Chavis over there talking with their defensive uh, uh, captain saying, look, watch the rollout. Don't let the quarterback get outside. Watch the slants come in the cut. You know what? I think this is an opportunity now to maybe run a play. Georgia has made so familiar that oh. P44 with the fullback right through the gut, and dump it off over the top. Yep, that's where you fake to the fullback through the line. He runs out on a pass pattern right up the middle. Is the fullback the lone setback? Play fake to him. Just a handoff, and they give it to the big gun. Well, why not? He was Mr. Emotion on the on that series. Why not go to him? Again, just quick handoff right here. They split the line. They got some great blocks up front. He rumbled into the end zone. And look at John Chavis. How in the world did they run right up our middle? Brent Smith for the point after. It's up and it's good. So we've got ourselves a seven point ball game with 527 to go in the third quarter. <laughs> That was pretty good. You got to admit that. Jackie may not be smiling now, but he's got to be a little bit happier. We'll be back after word from your local stations. We've got a close one in Starkville. 21-14, Tennessee over the Bulldogs. Tennessee leads this series 24-15 and 1. And they would love, Bulldogs would love nothing more than to uh, Get a little redemption for that 98 SEC title game, but a long way to go. Mark Jones, who has been everywhere. I must have said his name 25 times today. Yes. Return of 13 yards. But another guy we've spoken a lot of today and very highly of him as well as Mario Hagan, Dave. Well, I love the way he plays. You want to play linebacker? He plays tough. He's 
solid in the hole at the point of attack. He steps up, breaks through tackles when he lands on you. I mean, look at this, coming after the football, breaking double teams, slide to the ball. When he gets his hands on you, you're down. He's played a marvelous football game. He's been in on a lot of tackles today. This is how you play. See how square, roll back in there, just get into the play any way you can. Here's Banks rolling out, has his tight end, Witten who couldn't hold on to it. That play would have been for a first down perhaps, but Banks just couldn't get it into the hands of Witten. Hey, Hagen with five stops today. Actually, we'll... Uh, Jim Anderson, our spotter, wants to give him more, but we're going to give him five. <laughs> when you have 103, he's making a lot every game. We'll see Hunter Hillenmeyer to, uh, yeah. next Saturday, by the way, at Vanderbilt's middle linebacker who has 140 tackles. That's amazing. That is, that's a sick number. Here's Houston. Down a yard, and here comes third down. Dave, when you can't throw the football, when you don't have confidence in throwing the football, it puts such pressure on your offensive lineman and your offense, you just aren't able to move the football. Tennessee has got to loosen them up. They've got to go out and throw the football. Use Banks on that rollout a little bit. There's Randy Sanders. Been limited today in what he can call for this offense with Banks in there. Casey Clawson on the bench watching. Here comes the blitz. Banks dropped at the 20. Jolie Dunn sold out his defense, and the returns were astronomical. Well, it's an all-out blitz. Jason Clark leads it. Goaler comes in there, and I mean, they just crush him. When you got a linebacker and you got your strong safety in there, you're coming after him with everybody. There's Goaler, number 20, Clark, 40. Everybody's coming in there. They sold out. We've got a flag against Mississippi State way the heck down the field, oh. about the 35. Oh, yeah. It was 50 yards away from the play. Here's our referee, Thomas Ritter. Dead ball. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness on the defense. Oh. 15 yards, automatic first down. Oh. Look at Joe Lee Dunn. You know who I think it was on? I thought it was on Corey Banks. I mean, you're right. It was on, it was 25, 30 yards downfield. I was late picking it up, and well, what it does is it moves the football out to the 35 yard line, and it's first down and 10. I, I, I didn't see if it was Corey Banks or not. Maybe we have a replay of it. Here's Cedric Houston out to the 44-yard line. We can't get it on our replay, so we're not quite sure what happened down there. It was 50 yards away from the play. Well, I saw Corey Banks turning back to the official. Yeah. You see him shaking his head. That's a head shake of guilt. It's on his side. But what a turnaround. They were going to get great field position. They were going to have the ball. Their offense has got some momentum. Tennessee has yet to get it cranked up in the first, the second half like they did in the first half, running the football. That defensive front has stood tall here in the third quarter for Mississippi State. I don't think Houston got the first down. Maybe they'll mark his progress. I don't oh, think he gets it. Oh, he had to make the 45. What happens is he puts in there. Now, you see him come out there, and they just turn him around. Boy, that is close. It'll be third down and, and a yard, and there is Casey Clawson watching helplessly. I don't know. That's going to be very close. Joe Lee Dunn told us they had nothing to lose. They're not going to be conservative in his co play calling like he'd been in previous works. He's, he's just going to sell everything he's got, and he's doing that today. Oh. oh, he did. Josh Morgan, 47, was about four yards in the backfield. Look at 47 come in there. Come inside. He almost makes the tackle. You see it slip back outside. Had to make the 45. Oh, boy, that is close. Timeout taken by Tennessee. 
Fourth and a yard. Dave, you've been running the ball through the first half with great success. Your passing game is non-existent. Mississippi State absolutely knows that. What do you do? Well, if you're Mississippi State, you load the line of scrimmage. If you're Tennessee, you might come out and try to do one, a hard count, see if you can draw them offside. If that doesn't work, then just punt the ball away. It's a tough situation for Philip Fulmer on the other side because he's got an offense that's not running the football. They are just not, they didn't make a yard that time. Fourth down. Twice. If, yeah, they didn't if, make a yard. Yeah, and if you give the football to Mississippi State right in here, you're going to give them great field position. Zach is Cheryl talking to Joe Lee Dunn. Might be talking about the best deals on cars, trucks, and SUVs. For those, visit your local Toyota dealer today. So here we go, fourth and one. And Tennessee is going to come out, line up with a couple of tight ends. And the eye formation, Witten in motion. It's Houston, first down. T.J. Mulwitty makes the stop for Mississippi State, but about a half a yard too late. Well, this is good. Just great drive blocks off the line of scrimmage. Victor McClure was a tight end. He got a great block on that play. They just drove him off. Troy Fleming, they get behind him on that lead fullback block. And they pick up that first down. Well, what looks to be about that first down. They'll come out and measure the course. They didn't make it by much. No. Well, that will be a first down. It was a hard fought first down, but Tennessee needed it and got it. And Dave, you go back to that penalty. 15, 20 yards oh. off the line of scrimmage. Oh. That's the killer on this series. Well, these two teams have been chipping at each other since kickoff. You know, with uh, they, we've had four personal fouls, I believe, already in this game. As a matter of fact, Thomas Ritter, the referee, spoke to both head coaches going into the locker room. Banks with a good arm throws it up in the air. Off the fingertips of Jonathan Wade, who nearly caught up with it. Corey Banks on the coverage. And Wade, slow to get up. Tennessee, Tennessee's already missing a couple of receivers due to injuries, including Kelly Washington. Well, Corey Banks on the left of your screen is going to make a great recovery on the plate. He's beaten. Look at him. Just pour it on. Get out there and get a hand. Boy, watch this. Watch this. He's coming back now. He loses the cushion. All of a sudden, he sees the ball. And look at him put his head down and just run to the receiver and get a hand up there. He was beaten. Well, right on the back of the leg of Jonathan Wade. Tennessee runs away from the blitz with Cedric Houston. Gets out over midfield. Speaking of Corey Banks, Dave, it was great talking to him yesterday. And he says when he runs out of things to say to his opposing wide receivers, he then goes after the opposing coaches and likes to chat at them. He says he started, we go, who have you talked to? And he went, well, I talked to Kentucky. I talked to Memphis. I talked to Alabama. Uh, well, by the time he was yeah. done, he talked to every coach in the league. That's what you said. <laughs> who didn't you talk to? Right. But he's a very emotional player. Yeah. And you play, when you're a cornerback, you have to play with emotion. You got to try to get inside the helmet of those wide receivers. And he's good at it. Of course, wearing number two, which was uh, the number of the Fred Smooth. He's with the Washington Redskins in the NFL right now. On third down and four, Mississippi State's Willie Evans. It's Cedric Houston. Evans, the former fullback, has made a nice transfer to nose tackle for the Bulldogs. Boy, they call it shedding blocks, getting penetration. And that's what Evans does on the play. He's a nose tackle, just a freshman. They really enjoy him. Look at him, the nose tackle. Watch him just come in there. He's running in there. He's three yards in the backfield. He's a good one. Yeah, they say that uh, he's going to stay on that defensive side of the ball after the way he has performed the last couple of weeks. Colt with the punt it away. Corey Banks will let it go. And it hits at the goal line. What a kick from Colquitt. Oh, that was magical. A 46-yard kick that hit about a foot from the goal line and bounced back only a yard. You would think that the momentum would take it into the end zone. What a roll. Watch this. 
Look at this. Hits right on the goal line and comes back. And then doesn't come back very far. Look at this. It starts back to the goal line. How about the punter, Dustin Colquitt? Well, Do you think he liked that one? Well, Dustin got, uh, he, he probably, he got really good last week with 10 kicks against Miami. But that was uh, one of the better ones we have seen this year. And now the Bulldogs pin deep in their own territory. Here's Griffith, the fullback. Justin Griffith to midfield where he is finally brought down inside. Tennessee territory after a 56 yard run. That gets a wow from me. He was untouched coming through the line. Watch him, number 31. Great cut right back and behind the center, Blake Jones. And he just comes out there and just gets a rumble out through there. Now watch him protect the ball. They try to swipe it down. You see him, you see him put that other left hand up on top of it? He could hear him coming. Formation on first and ten. Norwood gets maybe a yard, and that'll do it for the first quarter. But that third quarter belonged to Justin Griffith, especially down the stretch. It's a good one. It's Starkville 21 14. A fourth quarter coming your way when we return. 21 14 as we get set for the final 15 minutes from Starkville, Mississippi. Dave Neal, Dave Rowe, Dave Baker down there on the sidelines. And Dave Rowe, we came in here with two teams that were struggling. Tennessee's lost four games. Mississippi State winless in the league, but we've got ourselves a pretty oh, good one. This is a great football game. You love defense, you like a game like this. Smash mouth, take no prisoners. Both teams playing with a lot of emotion. York. It's his receiver, Ray Ray Bibbins, to the 35 yard line of Tennessee. Our Gatorade third quarter stats appear this way 182 yards on the ground for the balls, but remember, they were up around 160 at halftime. Total yards, Mississippi State winning that battle, and Justin Griffith, who has appeared here in the second half, now has 69 yards rushing and a touchdown. Dave, I think you made a great point. Was Griffith playing in the first half? Yeah, I mean, he was. We never no. saw him. Well, he's here now. We know that for a fact. Here he is, making the handoff, and you know who else knows he's here now? Tennessee. Yeah. Stephen Marsh makes the tackle for the balls. Boy, this was good reaction by Marsh. What happened is Griffith was going to try to go outside. Look at Marsh just come up there. I'll tell you this, Tennessee is a well-coached team in tackling. They clamp on you, they wrap up, they do a lot of the right things, and it's a credit to John Chavis, the defensive coordinator, and their staff. So here comes a 53-yard field goal from Brent Smith. His long. Did he make it? Yeah. 53 yarder from Brent Smith, whose previous long was 52. And remember, he tried to walk on to the Tennessee team and they cut him. You don't think he wanted that to go through. The junior hits a career long and it's a four point game. Twenty one seventeen here in the fourth quarter Mississippi State right back in it after a mammoth kick by Brent Smith that went from fifty three yards and he just came close to splitting the uprights on that kickoff and for more on the kicking game let's check in with Buzz. You know Dave you know how involved Jackie Sherrill is in the kicking game beforehand they were out there at that very spot on the field. They were not only seeing what Brent Smith's distance was with that wind but which way the wind was blowing. They knew he was good from 55 in and kind of like you at uh, Bushwood where you remember they knew they had to start it just a little bit left of the upright and bring it back in. Oh, you're a funny man Buzz. <laughs> Second longest field goal in Bulldog history. 
Here's Banks under pressure, gets away from Clark, has some running room, picks up a first down, and hit out of bounds at the 40, excuse me, 34 yard line after a gain of 14. See, this is the way I think that Banks needs to avoid that pressure. Use those legs, use the talent he has. He gets good block by Fleming up there. You look at that block up in there. He gets a little bit of help, picks up that first down. Why not utilize his legs? Six rushing yards. Now remember, he's been sacked a couple of times, but Banks only 11 total yards. Edric Houston gets popped by Mario Hagan. You know, back to James Banks for just a second. We've heard Philip Fulmer say a couple of times today, and said to Buzz at halftime, is that we're not expecting James Banks to win this football game or move this football team. The other 10 guys around him need to step up. Absolutely. And you know how tough it is for that man, Casey Clawson, to stand over there? I can tell you, he's a competitor. He's got a lot of fire in his bonnet, and have to sit there and watch your team struggle and know the talent that you have. That's tough. Houston bounces outside and then gets bounced to the turf. Michael Goller makes the stop for the Bulldogs. For the Jefferson Pilot Sports Crews on the road covering SEC football, we like to eat at Huddle House and always enjoy their big house breakfast and lunch platters. There's Joe Lee Dunn looking on, and this crowd making some noise now. Boy, it was the first quarter, Dave. It was like we weren't even here. I know. Well, see what Joe Lee Dunn's defense do, does. Do they come with that full out blitz? I think they're coming. Here they come. Banks throws back across the grain. Plenty of daylight. CJ Fink inside the 20, run down at the five. Jason Clark made a touchdown saving tackle, but a 56 yard gain for Tennessee and they're in business. Great call in a great situation. Randy Sanders in Tennessee calls a slip screen. Look at the lineman bailing out. Look at Munoz, he gets the block. He's gonna turn back up inside. That's a great block right there. Allows your running back to get to the outside, your receiver. Then they're downfield. It's a good hustle by the defense. Jason Clark gets up there. He's a defensive end and he comes up there and makes the tackle, but great call by Tennessee. Jabari Davis down to the one. Gerald Riggs, excuse me. Well, Tennessee can put such pressure on you. Just an excuse outstanding, me. just an outstanding. Go back to Davis. Our, our producer, yes. Rob Reichley, in my headset says, no, that was Riggs. <laughs> so I'm going to throw him under the bus. <laughs> Who else? <laughs> Who else wants to get tossed under the bus today? <laughs> Well, Tennessee, you don't get fancy in this situation. Just blow them straight off the line. Second and goal. Touchdown, Tennessee, Jabari Davis. Just when the Bulldogs thought that they had Tennessee and the Volunteers strike for a 56-yard play and then this touchdown. Well, it's just a great, that's the strength of Tennessee, their running game. They've been known for it, and you don't get fancy down in there. The shortest distance to that goal line is a straight line, and that's right up the middle. Alex Walls with the point after. It's up and it's good. Tennessee's lead is 11. Jackie Sherrill couldn't believe it. He thought he had something going. Back to Starkville after this. 28 to 17, 10 55 to go in the fourth quarter. The Volunteers looking to become bowl eligible with a win here against Mississippi State. They are currently five and four right now. As a matter of fact, you got to go back a little bit since uh, to 94 to find the balls. Uh, where they've lost four regular season games. That's a long time. They're also trying to keep their streak alive. Eight straight New Year's Day bowl games. Little pooch kick. Dropped by the Bulldogs. It's a loose football. Who's got it? 
I think the Bulldogs may have. I don't know. Coughed it up. Tennessee getting a little oh. bit excited over there in that pile. Oh boy, another <laughs> turnover. There's an injured Bulldog, by the way, outside that pile. Well, on those pooch kicks, the one thing that you can do is fair catch it. You don't let it uh, bounce off your chest. An injured Bulldog looks like Darnell Jones. Back up fullback, and who's got the football? Tennessee jumping for joy. And the balls have it. I would not have wanted to have been at the bottom of that pile. Oh, that was a fight. That was a fight. But again, you can fair catch it, but it just bounces off his chest. You see the coverage right in there. There's the ball. You see it right there. They're going for it. And at the bottom of that pile, I can tell you, I've been down there. Boy, you all you're doing is you're pulling everything you can. But again, if you don't have a clear shot, fair catch it. What a scramble. What a scramble. So look at the turnover story there. Mississippi State with three. Banks hands it off to Davis. And turnovers were going to be a factor today. We knew that coming in, and well, they've been an issue here. They certainly have. I mean, this one, that was a killer right there. Gave great field position. Then they fumble it right back. Mississippi State capitalized on their opportunity. There have been just a lot of fumbles, putting the ball on the ground, and a lot of them are just careless ones. Ones like that where a quarterback gets smashed, they're not. But uh, most times you find fumbles are careless, just careless care of the ball. Frederick Houston stopped right at the line of scrimmage by T.J. Mulwiney. T.J. now with six tackles. Former walk-on out of Madisonville, Louisiana. Day for a defense, and I think Joe Lee Dunn will tell you this, for a defense to turn the ball over, and then all of a sudden you turn it right back over with another fumble, that is a killer. Boy, it's been a different half for Cedric Houston. 120 in the first half, and uh, the adjustments by Mississippi State, they keyed on them, they brought the safeties up a little bit, they've made good plays. Well, uh, you know, the other thing is they realize James Banks not, yeah. not going to throw the football. That's, right. That's how you're allowed to bring those safeties up. Timeout, Tennessee. We'll take it with them. It was cool but sunny when this day began, but clouds have now come over Scott Field and Mississippi State with its back to the wall on a cold afternoon, David. And the wind is howling as well, Buzz. On third down, Banks to throw. Back across the green, wide open. It's his tight end, Jason Witten. Touchdown, Tennessee, 29 yards. What a play call. Outstanding play call. Everything was going to the left. All the action. Randy Sanders, you can see. They just made a wonderful call for Mississippi State. It's an unbelievable call. Everything was going to go left. And Banks just pulled up, let his tight end slip out there. He made him pay. What a what a call. Five touchdown catches for Jason Witten this season. Now caught a pass in every game on the year. And Walls going after is up and good. Joe Lee Dunn's defense, I think, just ran out of gas. Well, there were, there were several turning points in this football game. But, uh, you know, you start thinking about that personal foul that gave him the football back. But watch number one. It's way on the right of your screen. You won't even see it. Everything's going left. Everybody's looking over here. He just plants and throws back to Witten. Look at that. Nobody within 15, 20 yards of him. And Witten just goes into the end zone. I'm going to say, Dave, that was a nice job of Jason Witten to come back to the football. A lot of guys would see that goal line and head toward the end zone right away, but he was making sure that he had a chance to catch the football first. That's a heads-up play from your junior, and he got smacked right into the uh, hedges here in Starkville. James Banks now 3 of 8 for 90 yards. 
The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. 35-17. When you think about just about a minute or two ago, it was 21-17 and all the momentum in favor of Mississippi State but Tennessee came back, two scores, really took back control of this football game. It didn't take long for folks to uh, head toward the exits no. either. They're cold, now they're mad. <laughs> yeah. Going home. A little pooch kick into the wind. This time the Bulldogs catch it after calling a fair catch. Marvin Birdsong. Had the honors, and this is what we're talking about. They had a record crowd of 54,807 on hand, and after that touchdown, it was like a sprint to the exit. Tennessee fans aren't going anywhere, though. Yeah, that's right. They're staying. Well, Kyle York in at quarterback, replacing... Kevin Fan, who just got hammered all day long. So at least the redshirt freshman getting some action. This pass dropped by T. Millen's Dave. T Mississippi State's going to have to fix this problem. I don't know how you do it, but their receivers are going to have to catch the football. Got to catch them. You got to help your quarterback out. Five drops now for Mississippi State today from their receivers. Well, a lot, of, a lot of concern for Jackie Sherrill. Came into this football game thinking you with Casey Clawson out. Thought they had a good shot. Move the chains. Keep momentum. And they really had them where they wanted. But uh, Tennessee just answered the call. Came back with those two late scores. Changed the whole complexion. This pass is caught. Ray Ray Bivens, the sophomore, makes the catch. Ray Ray. The real name is Damian Ray Bivens, but as a peewee football player, people just started calling him Ray Ray, and it stuck. Here's our Ice House scoreboard. Kentucky over Vandy by a couple of touchdowns. Arkansas is better than Louisiana Lafayette. Iowa, it's a final. They continue to win. Kansas State, Michigan also on the winning column, and Virginia. Knocks off NC State, the third straight loss for the Wolfpack after a great run to open the season. Pass is caught. Fred Reed, nice job. Got hit hard, but held on to the football, a gain of seven. And will they move the change? Nope, they'll say that it is uh, about a six inch shot. Well, you know, it's amazing. Now they catch the football. Two back to back catches, good catches. Fred Reed coming out of the backfield. Moving the football, but when they needed it, they dropped the football. Fourth down a yard. This is a run situation. You almost have to run. Got to call a timeout. Boy, Jackie Sherrill is upset. We'll take a timeout with the Bulldogs. Stay with us. Fourth down and inches coming up. Tennessee leading Mississippi State 35 to 17. Davis Wade Stadium, Scott Field. Fourth and one after the timeout. Loose football, still on the ground. Is it another fumble? I think York came up with it, but that's not going to be good enough either way. It's going to be Tennessee football, whether he fumbled it or not, because he didn't have the first down. And Jackie Sherrill is probably at his boiling point. Oh, he just pulled out too quick. He didn't get his hands to keep his hands under there. Then when he tried to run with the football, he fumbled back again, and Tennessee recovered. A great penetration by Tennessee at the line of scrimmage. Just a quarterback pulled his hands out too quickly. Still waiting on if that was an, an official fumble or just a loss of downs. Tough two years here for Jackie Sherrill yeah. and company. Well, they had such success, and they were, you know, they just rolled. They've been able to run the football and with success and be in football games. Jabari Davis on the carry. Hagan makes the tackle. That's eight tackles for Hagan.
Tennessee has been so dominant in the month of November since 1985. The numbers are staggering. 65 and 4 overall. They're 27 and 2 on the road in November since 85. And they are 47 and 1 against Southeastern Conference opponents. That one loss we had right here on Jefferson Pilot was to Arkansas in a thriller in Fayetteville a couple of years back. Inside the 40, Davis. Let's go down and check in with Buzz. What do you got? Dave, before this offensive explosion, there's been a lot of scrutiny in Tennessee about offensive coordinator Randy Sanders. He's a guy from Morristown, came to Tennessee. Now, back when he was being recruited, that's what alumni could call. He said Alabama had uh, uh, had Joe Namath call and, and Richard Todd and some other guys. But the reason he chose Tennessee, he got a call from Bill Dance, Mr. Bass Fishing. And when he gets uh, some time in the offseason, he says there's nothing he likes more. He said Dance promised him a chance to go fishing, and he said all these years later he's still waiting for that invitation. <laughs> oh, that's a good story. Thanks, Buzz. Maybe he's probably taken a few knocks this year from some fans, but he's called, a, I think, a, a great game with James Banks at quarterback today. Flag down, but... I think he's handled James Banks well as Mawinney's a little slow to get up, but... He's put Banks in a situation where Banks wasn't going to lose the game. Well, that's exactly right. He took a lot of pressure off his freshman and said, hey, listen, you don't have to win it for us. Just don't lose it. Illegal formation. Only six men on the line of scrimmage against the offense. That penalty is declined. Brings up fourth down. Next week, 1230 Eastern, 1130 Central, Tennessee and Vanderbilt. We will see the Vols for three straight weeks right here on Jefferson Pilot Sports. We'll see them conclude the season against Kentucky. But next week, we're in Nashville at Nashville Stadium, Nashville Coliseum, I should say. Be sure and join us for that. We'll check in on Quan A. Doster, one of my favorite players in the league. Right? Two freshman running back for the Commodores. On fourth and a couple of yards. And off goes to Davis. The flags are a flying. Well, you know what I thought? I actually thought if they had six men on the line of scrimmage last time, I thought they had six men on the line of scrimmage this time. Set back off the line. Those uh, tackles trying to get back a little bit, you know, to get that, that run at the defensive end. Illegal formation on the offense. That penalty is declined. The run was short of the line of the game. Ball turns over, first down. So the ball turns over, and with that, let's check in with Buzz. You know, this is a rare road trip this year for this uh, Tennessee football team, Dave. They've got nine games inside the state of Tennessee. They're true road games. They've only been at Georgia, at South Carolina, at Mississippi State, and then, of course, next week, as you mentioned, at the Coliseum against Vandy, their second game there this year. Thank you, Buzz. Stay warm. Pass. I couldn't tell if that was dropped or batted away. Grendel was the intended receiver, but more than likely it's a well, drop. Maybe we take a look, but uh, Grendel on a crossing pattern here. You got to help your quarterback. I keep on saying that, but I never he never even saw the ball. The ball hit him in the chest. He wasn't looking back at his quarterback. It is a chilly, chilly <laughs> day here, and it has gotten colder. As the day has worn on and the wind has picked up as well. The wind at the back of the Bulldogs right here. Second down and 10. York to throw. York missing. He's tied in. Donald Lee. But Davis, uh, we got two teams here that, uh, for Tennessee, strangely enough, that for both these clubs, I mean, you got to just go back three and a half years, and these two teams played for the SEC yep. championship game, but today there's a lot at stake around the Southeastern Conference. Georgia and Auburn, a game that could ultimately decide the SEC East champion. Later on, Florida, South Carolina, and on the West, anything's liable to happen. Oh, yeah. I mean, LSU, Alabama tonight, what a great stretch run we have in the league. Well, it's fun to come down to the end of the season and have these games mean so much. Yes. Team's trying to get bowl eligible, get that sixth victory so you get a possibility. Bulldogs will have to punt it away, but good defense from Tennessee to force the punt. 
Well, Willie, when, Willie Miles. Yeah, watch Miles get his hand in there. You know what he did? He broke. He looked at the quarterback. When he when he just saw that little plant, he saw that flicker coming. He just came right up and just tipped that ball away. That's good coverage. John Chavis will like that on uh, Sunday when they look at the films. My man, Mark Jones, back to return this punt. <laughs> Ooh, a great kick by Jared Cook. That'll bounce at about the eight, going to the end zone. 63-yard punt, but a wind at his back certainly helped that scenario. Tennessee will take over at the 20 with 5.09 to go in the football game. As we are in week 12 of the SEC football season. Philip Fulmer's club will become bowl eligible. Down that Mississippi State bench, a lot of teaching still going on. And we're going to have a new quarterback for Tennessee, C.J. Leak, the transfer from Wake Forest, who started against the Bulldogs earlier this year, the Georgia Bulldogs, but gave way to James Banks, comes in to take over the final five minutes. His first play is a handoff to Gerald Riggs. Rob Reichley, our producer, now tells me that's Gerald Riggs. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I crack on Rob only because I can. <laughs> Rob, one of the best in the business back in the truck, along with Gary Flynn, Kelly Collier, our technical director. And you didn't mention Todman Hennett, who produces our pregame show. Who? But, uh, Todd Minhinnett. That's Todd Minhinnett. <laughs> Second down and four for the balls. Gerald Riggs again just sticking his nose in the middle of that line. Jackson with a tackle. So for Mississippi State, Dave, they are going to drop 14 of their last 16 SEC games. And Jackie Sherrill's said that some of the guys they recruited some of their JC players just didn't work out like they anticipated that's a risk that they took a couple yep. of years ago but he really likes the recruiting class that he brought in last year he thinks he's got some great guys that are on board for the program that'll coming in in the next year he thinks that this team could win another Western Division crown in the very near future he said we have he said we have the talent we can just get there Gerald Riggs with a nice run. Yeah, there are 37 freshmen on this Mississippi State team. That's a ton. Yeah, that, that sure is. This, is. this is a nice run by another freshman. Get to the outside, break a couple tackles, run through them, trying to get yards. It's good, good play. Tennessee has done what they had to do to win this football game and stay in. They had to run the ball they had to take the pressure off of uh, James Banks and they've done that Tennessee also a young team they have played 14 true freshmen 14 true freshmen guys that were playing high school ball last year yeah. are playing in the Southeastern Conference well, that's a learning experience <laughs> but it's all brought on by injuries yeah. we talked about the 14 players that uh, have missed at least one game 14 starters that's pretty incredible and a great job by Philip Fulmer and his staff to overcome that now what do you do next week you know you start thinking about they've got two tough games they've got a Vandy game which is not real real tough but then they end up with Kentucky which is going to be a lot of fun yes that game this year will uh, be a lot of fun to watch hope you will join us as we round out our season at the end of the month High formation leak drop the football loose football picked up oh I don't know Picked, picked up, but the official blew the whistle and said a knee was down. But I think Mississippi State will take the football. But heck, Jackson could have lumbered his way for a uh, substantial pickup. But let's see if his knee was down when he picked up the football. Watch 56. He's the one that's going to come up with the football. It kicks it there. Oh, he was on yeah, the ground he when he picked it up. That's a good call. He rolled over, and before he had possession of the ball, as he had possession. Jackie saw it, getting his offense out there. And boy, it looks like Mario Hagan injured in the middle of the field right now. Boy, Mario has oh. been a, uh, I mean, just 
You said it best. He's a warrior. Yeah. You know what? I and I really like warriors. I think in this in the SEC, I've seen a lot of warriors over the years, and and that's the kind of football player he is. Good to see him up. Slow to get up, but uh, Mario. Two time all SEC player. Keep an eye on him right in the middle of the screen. Gets picked up on a blot on a blitz. Yep, number 98. Just got to know he Man. gets bent back over, falls back over. We see him being helped off the field. We hope he is all right because he's, he's, he's just one of those solid people in the Southeastern Conference I'd be proud to have in the yep. league. Pass is caught. From Mississippi State, the flag down at the 38. Justin Jenkins, the receiver. Clock at 2:20. And that'll be offsides against Tennessee. I just, uh, I can't wait to get home tonight. Figure out what the heck's going on in the league with <laughs> LSU and Alabama, Florida, South Carolina, Georgia, Auburn going at it. What a great, great Saturday of football. On the defense, penalties decline. Brings up second out. I was going to ask you to, to decide who win, who could win the West, what the possibilities were. <laughs> I, I, I got it. No, I got this, the whole thing oh, figured out. Oh, you got it. Okay. On display. <laughs> I want to hear this. York. Asking the officials for something. Here's a scenario. LSU. If they lose another game and Auburn wins out today and against Alabama team of the year, Auburn has the luxury of going to the SEC championship game. If LSU loses two games, Auburn loses one of two. But Arkansas wins out. Arkansas ends up going. Because they have the tiebreaker over LSU and Auburn by virtue of winning those games. Pass falls incomplete in the end zone. So there. Right there. All right. You know what? I knew. If anybody would know it, I knew you would know it. So I kind of set you up on it. <laughs> you did. Thank you for that. This is just a go pattern. Top of your screen, just go for the football. Throw it up. The defensive player makes a good. And again, just look back for the football. And there goes Mario Hagan. Good to see him walking in. An ankle, most likely. Uh, like you said, he'll be back. Reed, nowhere to go. Well, coming up for Mississippi State, Dave, uh, they still got to buckle up the chin straps a little tighter because they got a date with Arkansas on the 23rd, and then they round out the season at Ole Miss. So a couple of still tough games coming ahead for Jackie Sherrill and company. Well, this was a, this was a tough loss for him. 35 to 17 is not indicative of what the score was. They had a chance to win this football game. Donald Lee with a nice catch, run out of bounds, and you know where it turned. On a third and long, Mississippi State came up with a big sack, but 50 yards away from the sack was a personal foul. We think against Corey Banks in the secondary because we couldn't see it. It was so far away from the action, and that gave Tennessee a first down instead of fourth and forever. Yeah. But that was a deciding play in this football game. Well, one thing to you, coaches will tell you, you play until the whistle. I mean, you play as hard as you can. When the whistle goes off, you stop, and you have to play with composure. Every coach teaches that. Don't lose your composure. It looks as if Corey Banks, that's, you, you hate to blame one play, but that was a huge play was because they were going point. to get, yeah they were going to get great field position. They had stopped them. It was not a factor in the play. Here's Reed down to the 16 yard line. Every time Tennessee was challenged today, they responded. Coach Fulmer told us his team had to be tough today. He says, you know, we can call the play, but they got to be tough. The, the players got, they have to want to win today. And I think he got it. These guys yeah. played pretty inspired football. Yes, they did. They played, they played great control football. He said they wanted to take the pressure off of Banks, and they really did. They didn't make him win the game, you know, with a drive. 
So he did what he did, what he had to do. He escaped, I guess you might say. I mean, Tennessee fans yeah. might not want to hear that word, escaped. But uh, I'll tell you where I was concerned when they lost Baker early in that uh, early in that first half. You take a Rashad Baker out of that defensive uh, secondary, and you lose a lot. I hope he's able to come back and play for them. Devin Fant. We hope he's able to respond. He sprained his ankle and tried to go in the second half, but just couldn't do it. Pass intended for Jenkins, incomplete. Boy. On fourth down. Oh, we got a second. I'd like to thank Larry Templeton, the athletic director here at Mississippi State. He and his wife, Linda Joe, for taking us out to dinner last night, treating us well as we take one more look at uh, what was a near touchdown, but off the fingertips of Jenkins. But uh, the hospitality here was uh, fabulous, and we. I think Mike Nemeth, who's in charge of media relations. And Bud Ford from Tennessee was along for the ride today. Always great to see Bud. We'll see him in the next couple of weeks. Tough game for both teams. Tough because Tennessee lost another player. Tough for Mississippi State because they had a chance to win this football game. A lot of emotion put in this football game. And I think you have to credit both coaches. You remember that halftime summit when they brought both coaches out yes. there. The officials brought them out there and said, listen, I don't want any more of that stuff. And you know what? We didn't have it, really. I mean, it wasn't a factor in this football game. Well, for Tennessee, the story is going to be Cedric Houston's 120 first half rushing yards. He finishes with a career high 32 carries and a career high 149 yards and a couple of touchdowns. James Banks was three of eight for 90 yards, but one big touchdown to his tight end, James Witten. It wasn't pretty, folks. It was not pretty on either side. There is some happy Tennessee faces. Jackie Sherrill and Philip Fulmer, the two most tenured coaches in the league, meet for the first time in the regular season since 95. The Vols win it. We'll be back after this.